This is an Alter Nerd Reality Podcast. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Alter Nerd Reality Podcast. This is a podcast for everything gaming, everything nerdy, basically everything awesome. It is currently the 26th of December, 2020. Christmas is done for another year, boys. But given the chats we just had in the pre-show, I'd say that this guy's definitely been to a couple of Eyes Wide Shut parties. It is Hebrew Hammer. How are you, buddy? Uh, good. I did not get that reference. I don't know what Eyes Wide Shut is, so... Well, I can tell by some of that conversation that you've, you've lived it. You don't need to know what the movie is. You've lived it, bro. I have. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. I'm going to have to look this up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm and, glad to be here. Hopefully not an eyes wide shut thing. And bringing in the Christmas spirit is uh, the father of Christmas spirit himself. It is Dahooch. How are you, buddy? Doing all right. Seems like Hebrew Kubricked that shot. Yeah, bricked it pretty hard. That, that would have been a tough movie to shoot, I reckon, for so many reasons. Kubrick being a big one of them. Uh, yeah, oh, you hear all I, the horror stories. I get it now. I'm <laughs> yeah. reading the, the synopsis. <laughs> oh, it's about the sex. Yep, it's yes. about the sexies. Yep. Yes, it is. I've, uh, I've had the sex. Uh, at least I think so. I think it counts. I don't counts. want to brag, I, don't know. I have had the sex. So. I, don't, I, don't know. I don't want to be that guy, but I've had the sex. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be careful with that, though, because if he's ever streams on Twitch, oof, can't say the word virgin anymore, you know? That's true. Mm. Wow. Mm. wow. As long as you're not That's insulting crap. somebody, it's okay. Yeah, we're celebrating the virginism. I mean, Christmas Hooch, is the time to celebrate virgin. virgins that got pregnant. Yeah, Hooch, yeah, exactly. You're virgin. Uh, so, yes, yes, there I we am. go. Now um, we can't be on Twitch. Wow. Now we're yes. cancelled. Yep. Great. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've, there, I've had four immaculate conceptions. I yeah, exactly. Never known. Yeah, without his jingle bells being rung once. That's, yeah, that's yeah. pretty impressive. That's it. Well, I suppose All if right, you have a really good aim. Uh, this is going to... Oh, okay. Go yeah. We're going to loop back to that conversation we just had and someone's going to be talking about the Spider-Man. All right, so let's uh, let's not... <laughs> All right, let's get the shameless shilling out of the way. If you are enjoying this show, folks, make sure you leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you join the Discord, discord.me forward slash ANR, so you can join the chat. Or if you want to be an absolute superstar and help us uh, finance the show, grow it, allow us to spend more time, get better toys, uh, be like Rum Ham, which I think is the greatest <laughs> name for someone to join on Christmas Day. Absolutely. If you if you already had this name, already well played, I can tell we're going to be friends. But if you created that account on Christmas Day with the name Rum Ham, I know where your head was at during that moment, and I respect it. So thank you very yeah. much for supporting us, Rum Ham, on the Patreon. If you'd like to be like Rum Ham, head on over to patreon.com forward slash ANR pod. But we always have to, from now on, folks, as long as he remains at this tier, he gets a mention at the top of every show, is the motherfucking Space Whale, Della. Uh, Thank you so much. He is by far uh, our highest tier supporter. We had to create a new tier for him and more than happy to do so. So uh, I'm not saying everyone should be a motherfucking Space Whale. Uh, We actually added the motherfucking to it just because, you know, it sounds cool, in -hmm. my opinion. We uh, there's yeah. actually space whales in um, Star Wars Rebels. We should get a picture, and they're badass as fuck looking. So we should get a picture. Oh, there's of that space whales that in a thing. lot of different uh, universes. I'm trying to think of the last one that I really? saw. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's a good I idea. There was one in Stargate. Badass. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. So Christmas mm-hmm. merriment was had. Uh, obviously, less than it would be in a normal year. What happened yeah. at your household, uh, Le Chibri? Uh, super small. It was, um, honestly like pretty unsatisfying and, uh, lackluster. Uh, wait, what are we like, talking about now? Huh? Oh, I, I thought <laughs> I was talking about your penis. I was, Oh yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. As I said that, yeah, but, the, but also for Christmas though, um, yeah. as far as the amount of people that came, uh, that was also pretty small and lackluster because we, we right. only kept like immediate, immediate family, uh, coming over this time. And we didn't have like usually we have like uh, like I don't know, I'd say like at least fifteen ish people come over for like present opening time. It's a, a lot of fun, mm-hmm. um, which I know sounds weird because we're like um, like half Jewish too. We don't celebrate Hanukkah anymore. We used to do Hanukkah, which was a big big blast as well, and then also Christmas, which was awesome. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, now it's been in the past like I want to say eight years been reduced to just um, 
uh, Christmas, and so yeah, it sucked even more now of only getting Christmas and it being bare, bare, bare bones. So yeah, but now, other than that, I did what, what was that? I was say, I know that people who've been listening to this podcast for the last two months have been desperately waiting to get your opinion and hear about the mm-hmm. excitement of your first playing on that new Xbox on Christmas oh, yeah. Day. How'd that go, buddy? Yeah, so um, the box looks really, really cool. And, <laughs> You're yeah. such a cop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I have not opened my Xbox yet, and I, I, I haven't got the urge to open it yet either because there's just, you know, there's just no games out for it that I can't play on my PlayStation 4. So, you know, I'll get it set up, I guess, within the next couple of days, but, like, I don't see me. You know what, though? I think I, I have a free Game Pass subscription because um, one mm-hmm. of our friends here in the ANR community gave me a free pass like they had a code for nice. a free pass so i guess i actually will set it up and go in there is fable on there does anyone know if fable's available on game pass the older ones old yeah. uh, like it, one, one and two, two three. mostly like uh, three, three was be, three think. was lame but okay i mean still uh play, three I was play. definitely not my favorite of those yeah. i mean we know the new one is very 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 likely to be on game pass uh in fact there's no yeah. reason it shouldn't be Oh God, dude! Honestly, yeah, talking about, about the Fable, old ones. like gets me so fucking excited for Fable. <laughs> but, well, we're uh, gonna talk about that later in the show because we are gonna go through the things that we are. Because this will be the last episode of of twenty twenty one. Depending on when I edit this, it could be uh, the second podcast of twenty twenty one. Did I say oh, boy, oh, it is still twenty twenty? Oh, yeah. I'm so out of it today, guys. So out of it. It's a Christmas <laughs> hangover. Hooch, buddy, how was your Christmas, dude? Uh, it was pretty good, actually. Very low key. Uh, normally, we, we go through my uh, wife's, see, my my mother in law's uh, side of her family and my father in law or my, my father in law's side. So we have like two pretty big gatherings that we go to. But obviously, thank you, COVID, uh, we didn't mm. have that this year. So it was just the immediate family. Uh, my mother in law and my wife's aunt came over just for a quick. Hey, open up the gifts where everybody sat social distance and things. But the highlight, I think, was my wife's cousin made Chipino. And then we did a drive by past uh, uh, my wife's aunt and uncle's house where we kind of picked up the Chipino and some bomb ass clam dip and then mm-hmm. dipped out. But yeah, so we had Chipino for the last two days and oh my God, it's so delicious. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Other than that, it was just pretty low key, which I kind of liked. It didn't have the craziness of like, let's, let's unwrap gifts and then get dressed to go somewhere. And then it's, we're here for a little bit. We got to go to this other place and just driving all over yeah. the freaking Bay Area. Mm. Yeah, man. I don't miss that. Like having to go to your family's, then the in law's place, and then home, especially with an infant. Like, you know, it's that whole process sounds bad. It sounds fun, um, honestly. What? I love going out. I love going to different like parties on Christmas, dude. Uh, even with you've kid, never had awesome. to tote a kid. Well, you. you see, you're calling them parties. Mm, so they are. <laughs> no, they're not parties. So I like to call obligations. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. have like fun it, shit that you do with them at least? Like, yeah, leaving. <laughs> yeah i don't know it's one of those things where it's kind of like each of those ones up until the nighttime one when i used to catch up with my friends it was always like everyone was kind of all right we're here we're ticking off our time stamp and then we're on to the next thing like all of us like my my siblings were doing that my in-laws um uh you know sister-in-law was doing that and even mom and dad like they were getting ready to go to their mate's place so mm-hmm. i've said multiple times why don't we just skip it and go to the stuff they actually want you know yeah but yeah at ours we have like uh, like we do um what is it christmas cookie decorating and stuff like that like as like a competition where people just make funny shit um and then we have like karaoke um or just obviously christmas songs um and the occasional just christmas songs Uh, and the occasional banger thrown in there so yeah like sometimes like people will depart and uh and do some some funny regular songs as well give me but, an example uh, of a hebrew banger what would you identify as a karaoke banger uh well i, I did I, I karaoke uh it ended up obviously it's not karaoke but um what is it that that super heavy metal christmas song do you know what i'm talking about like it's just no. instrumentals uh, oh you're talking about the bells 
I don't think it's called. I'll do it as Peter Griffin. The <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's that, but it's the yeah, it's the like hardcore like like rock version. I'm sure you guys have all heard it. It's like legendary. I call it rock. I don't think I'd ever call a Christmas song hardcore. Uh, that one was regardless. that one is hardcore. Like uh, you must not be <laughs> uh, hooch. Back me up here. You know what I'm talking about, right? The one with I the know, guitar playing. I don't think it's hardcore. I oh, mean, you guys are yeah, crazy if you don't think that one. Anyways, well, I so I quote unquote karaoke to that one, which was actually me just pretending to play the guitar and air guitaring it for uh, right like the, the entirety of a song, which I think is like five or six minutes, and it was a fucking blast because I was bouncing off the walls with it. It was hilarious. It's um, not hardcore because there's the no way I did it at least was hardcore. I would say the well, song by itself is hardcore. Dude, uh, that thing is but fucking there's epic. No, there's no Scandinavian dude standing there with a with a mic half swallowed down his throat with guttural yeah. sounds with you a flamethrower. <laughs> and the first yeah, seven exactly. rows at the concert have like a grid where they're not allowed to walk in because all right, guys, this is the fire zone. If you stand here, you die. And one guy just goes, fuck it! And then just stage dives over it regardless. And a guy narrowly misses him with a flamethrower. I guess you need a mosh pit if, if something's going to be hardcore. Like, you at least need a mosh pit, I guess. Uh, so Yeah, yeah or fire or pyro or, you know, lyrics. Well, you could definitely you know, put generally. some pyro to that. And that song doesn't even need lyrics because it's so goddamn epic. So I, that is definitely one of the hard, hardest badass songs that there is. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> that, that song is epic as hell. Um, you are sounding more like a cartoon so character like <laughs> they have in like every movie that involves like high school kids where like there's always like this super white bread like uh rich kid there's like oh man it was pretty hardcore yeah i had a daiquiri and you're like okay like. <laughs> that is like uh it's honestly like not super far out because i only drink sweet drinks <laughs> for the most part like whenever well, i, I Whenever you well, see, to speaking of Sweet stuff, Dreams, what about, have you heard the Sweet Dreams cover by Marilyn Manson? Um, by Mar- No, I don't think so. I so that is to. closer to hardcore. It's very good. Have you heard okay. it, uh, Hooch? No, I, I said I, I kind of want to. Like, I love uh, Orgy's cover of Blue Monday. Oh, yeah, good track. Yeah. Hmm. Well, either way, the mm-hmm. song is hardcore as hell for Christmas. I, I love it. Um, it's my favorite Christmas okay. song, easily. So, yeah. If you want to come and comment on that comment, make sure you go discord.me forward slash a and r. If you love it as much as I do, go ahead and talk about it, too. This, like, I, I want to see this debate. Who, who identify? So, you'll need to post in gen chat uh, on the Ultimate Reality Discord. What the, Do the link that you have okay. um, for that song. So, so we all song, know yeah. we're on the same page here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... Okay, yeah. What you're describing it doesn't match up with my reality, but we'll I see feel like match. that's why I'm saying like I feel like you guys aren't even thinking of the correct song because like I can't I, imagine anyone not saying that this song is epic as hell. Like it just doesn't. There's even a difference between epic and hardcore. You know, I would say hardcore. It's both. Hardcore, I expect to be like somewhere like on a floor of an underground nightclub in Berlin that's just above a sex dungeon but below street level, I where there's a guy handing out hard. ecstasy. And you say, hey, you want to go to come for hardcore party? Like, that's different. I guess than what that's, you're right that's now. so if that's hard, I feel like that's not normal people's hardcore. I feel like that's just fucking mm. crazy. So, like, for me, this is hardcore, I would say. Like, this is like, right. this is like a song that you crank out and everyone just starts fucking jamming. Like, this is how I know you've never been on a Euro trip. This is how I have I know. never been on, I have never been to a period. So, yeah, I've, I've you definitely. Need to, oh, God. <laughs> America. Have you been, you've been outside the US, Hooch? Uh, only to well, I lived in Japan when I was a small child, and uh, Canada. But outside of that, not really. No. Yeah, when only the been fuck to Canada. Were you in Japan? How do I not know this? Oh, uh, dude, I was so young. Um, my dad was stationed out there when I think I was like three or something. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, but we were. I think we were there for like eighteen months or two years. I think it was not a very long time that we were out there. You and had the greatest potential to fuck with me just then. Just go. Well, I met this <laughs> old janitor um, in our town. <laughs> And I won a local karate tournament, and then yeah. I got flown over to train with him, and uh, we're playing with like these little spinny bongo drums things. And then he taught me how to stand <laughs> on a log and do like a crane kick. You can go full like narrative of uh, Last Samurai and say you did it all whenever you. Oh, that's true. Did. Yeah, be, yeah, be yeah. Like yeah, but uh, like going on a tangent of where I just was, uh, they just brought forward the uh, Cobra Kai release date to January first for season yes. three. Oh, I'm so fucking God. excited. I now, who need to who thinks? It. I have heard an increasingly large amount of people say that it's too cheesy after the second season. I disagree. After, I, 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 I have know it's seasons, cheesy, though. but I, I think that's intentional. Like, I think that it is meant to be cheesy, and I dig it. I like, think anyone who thinks that is too cheesy should watch Wonder Woman 84. 
I was <laughs> I, I was looking at that and said like this is cheesy for sure. Uh, yeah. But I was yeah. thinking the same thing. I was like, this is is really really cheesy. But yeah, um, you think that's cheesy? Hold my white bread because yeah. this movie. <laughs> um, so we're not actually going to do Wonder Woman eighty four. We're going to do that as a separate podcast some of the next couple of days. Uh, mm-hmm. So you guys will hear that because we don't want to. When we're going to talk in depth about a movie, we don't want to spoil it while it's quite new. And then you know if you don't want to hear about a crap Wonder Woman movie, then you don't have to. But if you want to yeah. hear us shitting on a movie for probably 45 minutes, I think that's going to happen tomorrow. So, Yeah. I'm excited to yeah. do that, actually. Shitting on movies is one of my favorite things. Shitting on a lot of things is one of your favorite things. That's most of what you do. Also, shitting is most of what you do here. Too. Shitting yeah. on oh, everything. Right? Yeah, I think Shitting like, on popular things is what Hebrew likes to do. That is not, like, that's that true. does not, like, <laughs> it is not a thing where I'm like, this is popular, I fucking hate it. I'm not that guy. But... I think Jackie246 nailed you with that comment last week. I think Jackie246 think... <laughs> is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> ah, I wish that, that he funny. was here because I really wanted to, like, we were like, all right, we have to discuss this, like, with other people around because we it was getting intense. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, this, this is the whole thing this is why we created this because yeah. nerd battles happen all the time and it's because yeah two people love or hate something so much that it, when that all comes together mwah, so good yeah for sure all right what do you think guys talk about what we've been up to did we get much gaming time in over christmas i know that there was no uh box for hebrew but did you play anything at all not not really um I just played like some more destiny. Like, you know, the expansion came out. I've been playing that. I'm still not all the way through the campaign. That tells you how, how much I've actually been playing it. And then I've also been playing league of legends. So it's really just like, yeah, not, not much there for me. Um, right now. Did you play any of the Genshin update with the new? Oh pack? yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I did play. Yeah, Genshin just came out with its newest update and uh, for the Dragon Spine region, and it's really, really good actually. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it shouldn't be surprising because they they put out good stuff. You know, there is definitely I will say there's there's definitely like a a feeling of lack of content because you go through the content pretty quickly and then you yeah. have like a long period, and I totally get that. It's just one of those games where like you have to be willing to like stick around and be okay with that release schedule. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. It's, um, it's a a new region that has a lot of verticality to it. So it it looks kind of small on the map, but it's actually like very, very fill or very filled rather. Um, but yeah, it's good. The storyline is, is really nice. The new creatures that they introduced, they're not like, there's a few new, new ones. Um, but mostly they're like, you know, slightly different versions of things that they already had which I expected and I really hope that they expand on that more because I do I do like to see like new new enemies come in. Um but yeah, really good. Um they they put out like a, a really awesome weapon, really awesome character, um a lot of new free equipment and also uh the new events are resin free. So you don't have to spend resin on them to do them. So that's really cool. A lot of a lot of really cool stuff happening there. It is a great game. Um, until they do something wrong, I, I will say that till the day I die. It is a quality fucking game. So yeah, good stuff there, for sure. I haven't logged in for a couple of weeks because mm-hmm. any games a service game, I will inevitably hit a wall. Right. Yeah. If there's no sort of regular released end game content, and that's yeah. kind of the where I'm at with Genshin is that. It's still one of my favorite games of 2020. Definitely mm-hmm. the one that surprised me the most that I would like it. Because the art yeah. style, the story with how it looked in the ads wasn't me. I've talked about this before. Right. But it's that lack of an end game that's keeping me from touching again. Because I know I'm yeah. going to log in. I'm going to play, let's say, one or two hours of all the new storyline. I'm going to love it. And then I'm going to put it down. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of at the point now that I'm just going to save up all that content and story for maybe a couple of patches unless an end game pops in uh because like everyone's telling me about it mm-hmm. like the new weapons sound great and the new dungeons sound awesome and the new gear sets and the story like it all sounds great and then say like, okay i'm gonna do that for one day and then what yeah what am i gonna do with that new gear what am i gonna do with that new character and mm-hmm. given that it's got you and you got to spend if you want to experience some of the the you know bigger parts of that like the new weapons or the new characters I just don't think it's worth it for the amount of time that I'm going to play that game. So I have gone a bit off Genshin. I'm just at that point. And it is my own fault because we're talking, you know, well over 100 hours into that game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I can actually check the metrics, but I should at some stage. But it was a long time. So uh, I'm certainly not disappointed in the game, but it's certainly... I think it's not a bad strategy. I've had my fill for now. 
Yeah, I think that what you're doing is not a bad strategy at all. I think that's totally fair. Like, it does lack a, mm. like a, a true end game, like what we're used to for MMOs and stuff like that. And I don't know if yeah. they're ever going to impl- implement something like that. I hope that they do, but because that's something that I feel is, is missing too. But other than that, like, I totally get just waiting and just like going through a bunch of content whenever, you know, a couple patches out. Like, I would say never get rid of it. And like, you should always like play it later on just because it is oh, genuinely very good. Which, yeah, you said you're going to do but i think that that's a totally fine strategy like whether you play it yeah you know, on on release and then you know put it down or you know wait for patches and then play it like i think either one very valid uh, way to play the game well it's like uh it's like a christmas it's like christmas advent calendar but for gaming right like you've yeah. got your 24 <laughs> chocolates all in the calendar you can just go well I could have a chocolate like once a day and just go, no, oh, that was that was nice, but yeah, I wish, geez, I wish I had another chocolate. Let well, us yeah. wait till the twenty fourth and go, Barrr! and then get diabetes. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm gonna exactly. do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Solid plan. Now, uh, unbelievably, Hooch, you have completed Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I have finished the main story with, with, an, with an asterisk. With an asterisk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have finished the main story, but actually, since then, I've been going back and doing more side missions and uh, cleaning up as much as I possibly can. I, for some strange reason, the the story, the the the, the world, all of it just kind of grabbed me. And I, every time I have a spare minute, I'm like, you know what? I want to I'm gonna go mess up some uh, uh, some meatheads and mess up some uh, maelstrom and go get some of the the voodoo boys or something like that. So mm-hmm. you know, or the animals. That's what they are. And it, it's. It's been a lot of fun just kind of driving around the world, picking fights with people, finding different, um, you know, police uh, activity and gang activity and random side gigs and missions. I still have a, a very large list of jobs, side jobs and gigs that I need to do. So I'm mm. really, really looking forward to just going through all of that. Yeah, the amount of side content that's quality in this game is the reason that it's going to take me forever to finish this game. I think I'm level 43 now, and I don't want to tell you on air where I'm in in the story. I'll talk to you off air about it, but I guarantee you... Actually, I can tell you in metrics. I think on the uh, like street cred side of things, it's like 90-something percent like because I'm doing all the side stuff. But in oh, regards nice. to uh, like saving my own life, uh, it's like maybe thirty percent as oh, wow, far okay. as completing the like the whole central mystery of the thing, like the central mission. Mm-hmm. I think it's like forty percent. So I got miles to go, dude. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. I think I've got like most of the equipment I could possibly get. So I don't even mm-hmm. really know what I'm farming for. I've got money coming out of my ears right now. I could buy most of the cars on the map and still have change. It's crazy. Nice. Did you find Skippy? Uh, I know where he is, but I haven't gone there yet, no. Okay, I'm, this is minor, minor spoiler, but I think it's important. If mm-hmm. you get Skippy, there's an option, that there's a decision you have to make. Whichever, okay. dis, whichever decision you make, you'll get the reverse after 50 kills. So keep that in mind. Interesting. Okay, because yeah. I'm deliberately waiting to get most of the legendary weapons that I know where they are or how to get them until I'm level 50. Because the game scales your pickups based on your level. Skippy levels up with you. Oh, he does? Okay, yes, that's good. Because I know yeah. some do, some don't. That's good to know. Uh, yeah. Let's not get too specific for those no, not playing no. Cyberpunk. So based on the ending and the fact that you played the game, let's say as intended, because you played mm-hmm. it on a very good PC rig, uh, do you think this is a game that in sort of six months to now, people are going to be the complete opposite of now going, geez, that was a great game. And you've got to play this game, dude. Yeah, I mean, once they fix the issues that they have with performance and a lot of the bugs, this is easily Game of the Year material. Easily. Interesting. Well, it, I don't know where it falls now. Because, like, gaming uh, awards always are really strange that, like, they're announcing winners in, like, second week of December, which is the week that this came out. Yeah. So, This would yeah, roll into 2021. It has to roll into 2021. Cause it Dude, didn't as we're going to talk about in a little while about like what's coming up next year that we're excited about it's gonna have some stiff competition to take out that title i mean stiff wait till we get to that list man um i think it'll be pretty hard pressed to get there we'll see we'll see yeah how's that uh diablo immortal alpha treating you so yeah um i pushed hard to do cyberpunk so i didn't get as much uh time in diablo immortal but then when i did get back into it 
No, let me finish. Yeah. That's I what we should get... ask the community on a poll. What's the biggest dick slap in the face? Exactly. Uh, Hooch getting into the Technica Alpha for a mortal and going, eh, fuck it, I can't be bothered. Or yeah. Hebrew <laughs> Hammer owning an Xbox and just going, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to play it. I honestly <laughs> think that's more understandable. Who's than, the biggest asshole is what I'm saying. <laughs> what was it like? What was it? Biggest 2020 fuck? Wait, now we're in the... Oh, we're in two the... new nominees. Yeah, yeah exactly. well played. Uh, we're yeah, in the yeah. running. Um, Shit. So I did get I did get so I'm getting further and further or closer and closer to the end game stuff, but I did get a chance to do a little bit more. I finally got to Westmarch, which is the main town hub portal thing. And that's where you have a lot of the stuff that the game offers you. Like you can pick up bounties there where it's just a series of quests where it's kill X number of things. You get a reward. Uh, the auction house is actually there, but it didn't it's not set up yet and it didn't offer any like actual gear. So it's kind of like just gems and things like that that they have in there or that looks like they're going to have in there. Um, you know, and then then all the different the that's where the gem crafter is. And I finally came across the one thing that I do not like about this game. And that's the fact yeah. that you cannot change gems on the fly. You have to go back to a gem crafter to have them remove gems. And also you mm-hmm. have gem colors that um, they're locked. To, or gear has gem types that are locked. So you like have red gems. You can only put red gems in that gear slot. So okay. it, it limits that ability to, you know, uh, augment a bit, you know, uh, powers or whatever by adding, you know, specific types of gems. Uh, but you can upgrade your, you can create and upgrade legendary gems. So that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, I'm finally getting more gear that directly relates to some of the abilities I have and is mm-hmm. improving their effectiveness. So that's actually pretty good. I'm starting to kill stuff faster. And you have the Eternal Rift system, which is more kind of like where you're running the um, Nephilim Rifts, where you just have a set time limit and it's still they got that bar that you have in, in D3 where you're trying to beat the time, get to the Rift Guardian and bounce out. You can also add runes to change some of the properties of it like i added one rune that completely removed the guardian so all i had to do was finish in the time limit and then i just won and ah there's the microtransactions <laughs> i found yeah <laughs> yes exactly yeah yeah totally uh because you also have legendary rooms uh that you can that you can use that add even more uh, p- parameters to the game and change things like that mm-hmm. so cool. i i i had a lot of fun with it uh, i keep wanting to go back and, and play more yeah, I probably will after we get done here. Is there any way I can play? The, like, I'm sorry, but is there any way that I can like play this like from you? Like, <laughs> I've honestly yeah, never would, experienced you definitely want to admit jealousy breaching on this their level. TOS. <laughs> yeah. Like, I on like I I'm I've never been so jealous of a person. This is a new emotion for me. Like, I'm I'm very upset, but like happy that it's in existence. That there's so many weird emotions going on right here. But like, can I play it? Can you? Is there a way? That I can, is there a way to play it through, vicariously know, like, through me? Yeah. Is there a way for me to play it like through you? <laughs> no, but I will tell you that you're jealous now. But wait until I get into the lol MMO. Oh well, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I, you guys won't see me anymore whenever lol MMO comes out. No, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna like disappear. The alpha. <laughs> I'm gonna the, try to fuse myself. That's what it sort of becomes a stream instead of a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are uh, you watching some stuff on Hulu as well, Hooch? Yeah, so uh, it turns out that uh, my incorrect information of Rama being on Crunchyroll has been rectified. Rama is now on Hulu. So I spent some time watching the first season of Rama while I was doing work and other things. And it's still amazing and, uh, and yes. as hilarious and fun to watch as it was yeah. many, many years ago. And there's, there's seven seasons and mm-hmm. it's still all glorious. Dude, uh, there's so much untapped potential there for for shows and movies, dude. Like, I really hope that. Um, I mean, we are starting to embrace it, but like, I really hope that we go full force with it. I'm I'm really glad to see a, um, like Crunchyroll buy out. Uh, what you would call it? Um, or PS4. You mean Sony Roll. now? Because like, was it, yeah. uh, that's all in the Sony now. So what was yeah, the other one? Much more buying power. It's Crunchyroll and oh, how am I blinking? Funimation. Funimation. I don't know why you. Funimation I'm the least acquired right. um, Crunchyroll, and I'm so glad to see that because I think that that's going to become a big part of their con- of PlayStation's content. So I'm super yeah. excited about that. So yeah, this is this is going to be uh, interesting. But that that show's amazing. So I'm glad that you're watching. Yeah, it. see where it goes. 
Uh, my side project continues, Hooch. I think it was I think it was your first episode on the show. I was talking about how I had started watching Buffy as like a little side project because I never yes. did. And you were saying uh, definitely keep an eye out for one particular episode, which I did yesterday, which was uh, Once More with Feeling in season six, which is, I guess, what we've come to sort of know in a lot of these kind of shows now. But I think this was the first one that ever really attempted it, which is uh, turning it into a musical episode. Yep. Yes. Uh, Now, I think this is suffering from the curse of time, but of all of these shows where I've seen them do a musical episode, this was like as far as the music was concerned probably one of the weakest so know this joss whedon took time the time off between seasons to learn how to write music and he wrote all the music and all the lyrics for the song oh i'm aware and apparently most of the cast was just like okay joss okay yeah yeah Yeah, we'll do the musical episode sure the studio (laughs) will definitely go for that (laughs) <laughs> and apparently he was pushing it forever to make it happen. So I, I will say that I, d- I didn't really love that episode, if I'm being honest. It was okay, but there was a lot of it. Like, there's very clearly, um, like, back then, there might have been some people that had, like, you know, a little bit of an ability to sing, but they didn't have vocal coaches the way that they do now, where mm-hmm. you can take someone who is kind of dog shit and make them seem like a rock star, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there was a lot of notes where you sort of go, oh boy, that takes you straight out of there, you know? Um, <laughs> Anything but I will say, I think it might have been season five, there was an episode called The Body. Do you remember yes. that one? Oh, absolutely. That episode is fucked in how it hits you because yes. it's the most real representation on television I've ever seen of what happens when someone dies and like the couple of hours to days after that. Yeah. And it's it's harsh. Like not nothing supernatural about it. It's literally uh, Buffy's mum dies. Uh, she walks in just after it's obviously happened. And then she is freaking out. So she calls, you know, Giles. She calls the ambulance. They come. They try and save her for a couple of seconds until they realize that she's dead. And then something that really speaks to obviously the American system of things, they leave her with the body while the coroner comes. Mm-hmm. And obviously just that feeling of like, what do I do? There's a dead person. It was my mom. It's not my mom now. Uh, and then like the preparation of what to do for a funeral, like that whole episode. And it's also the one thing I noticed was the quiet. Yes, it's the only is- episode in the, the you know six seasons I've watched so far into seven now where there is just no music at all no and no embellished sound it's just raw yes and i thought it was wonderfully shot it was really really good um season five is when they obviously went to sarah michelle and said hey look we've had some feedback that everyone can kind of see the stunt double pretty clearly doing everything when we're doing training scenes you're going to be the one punching the bag and (laughs) like watching her punch a bag with like bent wrists (laughs) which would break an arm of a non-slayer because yes. like you don't punch like that it's like it's <laughs> yeah very yeah. stereotypically cartoony for lack of a better word girly punches you know what i mean mm-hmm. that you go who who was the the guy orchestrating the choreography for this you know yeah. sure, surely being able to teach her to punch properly would have been something before you made that decision so there's a lot of those little moments that continue where you really see the age of the show um I probably the storylines that's continued through that I like the most was definitely Willow's so far. Oh, so yes. obviously end of season six, she is the big bad, which is pretty oh. cool. So yes, so yeah, Willow yeah. being the big bad in that one was was the best. But I think they've done. Does the phrase "bored now" mean anything to you? Bored now. Bored now. Yeah, because yeah. I, that, was, okay. that was the end of that episode, yeah. End of that yeah. season, yeah. Where okay. they get bored now and then strips the skin off old mate. Yes, but that that that's... I don't think that's the only time she says that. And I think it is in season like five or six or whatever. I don't want to like spoil anything. They've said it but, before, yeah. Okay, okay. Because it's the alternate Willow. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is also like... Uh, and not yeah. which Willow. Um, yeah. So I can see where this is going. That hasn't happened yet, but there was a, I think it was episode two of season seven where you sort of saw that flash of she's protecting a chick from like a spider demon or something. And then uh, you see the eyes flash and, you know, someone, uh, she says something like, shut your whining and then it flips back and Willow's unaware. So I can kind of see where they're going to go with this uh, throughout this season, yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, 
it, it, it definitely dragged a bit through seasons four and five for me like i nearly sort of put it down but I'm like nah i'll finish this whole thing because i want to see how they wrap it up at the end i don't think i'm going to go go straight from this and make angel my next side project because <laughs> there's a lot of universes like supernatural is a great example where like they might have a bit of fun but they never really have a win like it's always disappointment at a personal level from one to the next there's always a heartbreak or a tragedy after the other mm -hmm. after the other after the other yes. and this show started off so light and jokey but all through those seasons man it's just fucking depressing so yeah you've kind of lost that charm and that spark and anya or anya was really the only character that was trying to bring that and then they were like, let's have Xander leave her at the altar. So that's gone now. So yeah, a lot <laughs> yeah. of that charm's gone. And With spending way too much time on this spike setup shit as well. Like that's three seasons too many. Yeah, well, the whole thing with season four was that was the one with the initiative, right? And everybody hated That's right. Him. Everyone hated Riley. Yeah, he was, yeah, he's not great. No, yeah, yeah he, he was boring. Uh, it's like, you wait, you go from, from Angel to Riley? That's, no, no, you know. Yeah, well, even in that, they were sort of saying that, you know, she was too white bread for him. But look, I mean, this is a, a 10-year-old TV show, so let's uh, let's get off it. Um, because people have either they've seen it uh, or they're not going to see it. I think it's kind yeah. of the two camps, Pretty unless much. you're an outlier like myself. Let's talk about some general nerdy news, shall we, boys? Certainly. All right. Now, Sony, I'm actually quite excited by the potential for this. Sony came out and said over the next couple of years, based on the rights that they have uh, for PlayStation games, they are going to be making three movies and seven TV shows based on PlayStation games. Now, given the history of video game based movies, this is potential for awesome, most likely going to lead to theatrical dog shit. I would probably agree with that. I'm inclined yeah. to, to agree with that, yeah. Now, that begs the question, though, given that we don't really have that much info about this, what are these IPs going to be? Because one thing we don't know is, because obviously this came through Sony, are they counting the Monster Hunter movie as part of that mm. uh, three? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and, if, is well, the, and is that a shining example for him? Because if the answer is yes... Mm, disappointment is ahead right so if monster he's not counting it maybe yeah but does monster hunter actually count as sony ip they have the is... rights for it though so mm -hmm. i mean okay. i think yeah because i mean monster hunter og was like is it technically nintendo a subsidiary of nintendo uh monster hunter because they're always capcom. nintendo games for a long yeah, time I thought it was is capcom it capcom too. i think it's you're right capcom. actually yeah you're right, you're right you're right yeah yeah that's how you get so that's... the street fighter characters in there true or Ryu that's right I forgot about the Ryu tie-ins <laughs> or Ryu if you want to say Ryu <laughs> uh, so we know Uncharted movie is one of them yep mm -hmm. we know and I I don't know I'm positive you talk about this but are you guys aware of the fact that we have a Last of Us TV series coming yeah we talked about it on the uh, podcast yeah. I'm positive we did yeah I just want to make sure uh, so that's coming through and awesomely it's coming through HBO so the chance mm -hmm. of that being good is really good because the source material is great if you get the right casting I mean we're set you know it's going to yeah. be awesome um, and there will be apparently an upcoming live action Final Fantasy 14 show uh, that'll be a partnership between Sony and Hive Mind Productions yeah yeah I think we knew about that one as well I'm that excited one, for that yeah. one. I'm excited for the Final of Fantasy those. one. I didn't know about because why is it specifically Final Fantasy 14? That's the MMO, yeah. isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, the second MMO. Uh, <laughs> I don't Final think we. Uh, I don't think we one. knew that it was Final Fantasy 14 until recently. I think at the time we had just known that they had announced that they were making a Final Fantasy show. See, um, if they, if it is based on 14, let me tell you the one thing I hope they do do. Mm -hmm. And there's been a couple of times mm -hmm. that things do have do. tried to do this. I think I talked about this before with Defiance, the TV series and the MMO, that when the episode would air and it would introduce new shit that happened in the story that would evolve certain NPCs in the game that they would change too. So you'd actually have tie-ins between the TV show and the game. If they're doing something like that, where like the game's kind of evolving with the TV show to paint the whole story, mm -hmm. I'd love it if that's what they're trying to do here. Yeah, no, that that would yeah. be good. Um, yeah, I, I hope that I hope that they do something like that. But yeah, I am surprised that like it didn't. Uh, given the popularity of Final Fantasy VII, I am surprised that it they didn't focus on that instead. Yeah, well, let's talk about Sony IPs then, because I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, this is where we start talking about the potential for awesomeness. Uh, which of the other ones do you want to see? Because, I mean, 
Resident Evil's kind of been done to death, but I think that mm-hmm. still falls under their banner. Um, we know that they're going to give it a bit of a, a reboot, so I'm on board with it because there is enough interesting stuff there. Um, Metal Gear Solid, I don't know if it is Sony, but we know that something is happening there. Then we have, uh, of course, God of War. Is that there's no yeah, way that's, that's not going to be thing. yes. God of War would, would be definite. I would yeah. love it. I don't think that that's going to happen though. But um, Horizon mm. also, I think, would be a really that's good one the one I out. want the most. And the, the thing is though, the budget to make yes. that into a movie is going to have to be monstrous. Like it would have to be huge. Or you I'd prefer it as a TV with... series. Oh, I would prefer it as a TV series as well. Actually, that's a good point. Like movie versus TV yeah. series. I, I think that that definitely yeah. deserves a TV series. That ties into oh, something yeah. that we're going to talk about later on too, but I think you probably already can guess what I'm going to talk about. But but yeah, like I definitely think that, that should be a, a TV series. I'm trying to think of other PlayStation IPs, like so, play, like or Sony owned IP, not necessarily just PlayStation. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Sony. Yeah, Sony, Sony IPs. IPs. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of other Sonys, but this is specifically the Sony PlayStation IP they made this comment about. So they said right. it was specifically oh, yeah, uh, uh, three uh, movies and seven TV shows. Um. Ghosts of Tsushima? Uh, That might be like a pretty interesting thing to play around with. That's one they could definitely tap into. Um, What they do with that. See, Infamous I would be down for because that you could kind of make the new Heroes TV show. Yeah. With that, Mm. in in a way that's fun, exciting, and, and captures a lot of, you know, there's a lot of elements of those games where you do have like that sort of you know corporate threat rising in the background and i think this year is definitely a time and you know a virus that can spread that can give people superpowers as well i mean you know yeah there's a lot there's a lot you could do with it right now yeah exactly um yeah last guardian they could do as a kids tv series i don't know if they would uh, I, I don't know if thinking, there's enough popularity crash bandicoot tv no, I series that, i think that or- was a thing once before Ratchet and mm-hmm. Clank, right? Aren't they? Are they oh, the Ratchet and Clank? I feel already? like there was a straight to DVD something of that in the past. Or am Don't I wrong? Uncharted. Also, we have one coming. There are Uncharted. Well, yeah. No, are, we already said that. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, okay. We know because we, we've also talked about that too. Uh, yeah. In the past, was that one a, a movie or a series? I, I already forgot. That's it's a, a movie. movie. That one. Yeah. Okay. That so, was a movie. Okay. That's the well. That's the, the first one that we know of because it's right. obviously yeah. through production or very close to. Yeah. So it's on its way it's just there's so many of them that i would just like every time whenever i think of one i'm like oh but i'd rather have that be a tv series than a movie um uh, i'm trying to think of one that would be like a make for an actual good movie so like not an, a lot of content um but something that could be mm-hmm. like condensed into that amount of time that's part of the problem is most yeah. of the stuff nowadays is a franchise that has too much content yeah to that's be not- able to just do a one-off movie with it yeah, that's what I'm referring to with that, what we're going to end up talking about later on, because like, that's definitely going to be a discussion that we're going to get into. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think well, that's like all the ones I could think of. Yeah, I think that's probably about it for now. I mean, obviously, if you're listening, um, yeah, if we've missed anything, if it's something you'd like to see, let us know on the Discord. Um, but it's interesting you say, you know, obviously, people want to see more things in TV format now, especially mm-hmm. with streaming the way it is. And Kevin Feige, uh, obviously, the yeah. man who has given us the joy that is the mcu over the last decade it feels exactly the same way uh he was in interviews this week talking a lot about how he's so excited and thinks the future for the mcu is definitely very heavily driven through the tv series and talking about why it's awesome but in that interview he let a couple of things go which sort of fleshed out uh some ideas of things we already had about these shows to be a little bit bigger Oh, a little bit more uh, detail. Mm-hmm. So I uh, talked a little bit more about the She-Hulk TV series mm-hmm. um, with uh, that being now officially a half hour legal comedy. And that he's saying it's a show that's going to be completely different to anything Marvel's ever done before. So mm-hmm. I'm predicting, given the showrunner that we talked about, it's going to be Brooklyn Nine-Nine in the MCU, which, yeah. dude, I'm so excited by this. It's becoming one of my most looked forward to over there. I just think it, it like I am really excited for it if they do it right. But I feel like and I, I do have confidence that they will because I don't think that th- that Feige will put the stamp on something that just isn't at least good. But mm. um, but yeah, like if I feel like it's a difficult thing to handle. Luckily, I have faith in them because like it could end up just super bad and cheesy if it's done incorrectly, which would be fairly easy to do um, in general, I'd say. But I'm I'm excited to see like what comes of it because. I assume they're going to do it correctly, so I assume it's going to be really fucking cool, really good, and really unique. So yeah, absolutely. Well, 
the the fact that uh, it's not it's going to be a comedy rules out uh, Law and Order MCU. Oh man, they could still do that. What will the intro mm-hmm. for that sound like? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> well, that's some some superheroes are as not as cool as the others, and we need to give them only a half hour TV series instead. <laughs> These are the stories. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So he was talking about that. Obviously, they got the series coming up. They got Falcon, the Winter Soldier, Loki, Miss Marvel, Hawkeye, Moon Knight. But this is the this is the extra two words that all of a sudden make sense to me on what mm-hmm. we were talking about last week, and the crossover event, secret <laughs> secret invasion. Yeah. yeah. So when they said Secret Invasion was going to be its own series, now this makes sense. Is that it is them all coming together to play out that storyline. Now I'm fine with it. It's the Because when they were saying it was just going to be something... They were saying it was just going to be in a TV series that had Nick Fury in it. uh, With, um, uh, what's his name? Ben Mendelsohn? Ben Mendelsohn, yeah. Yeah. Uh, In which case, like, okay, that could be fun. But it's them just doing like, you know, uh, space pretend stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. But now that it said it's a crossover event, now I get it. I'm more pumped. Uh, than I was during our Disney chat. Yeah, I think that's going to really put like the uh, TV series paradigm for Marvel to the test because yeah, like it really, that does feel like it's going to be the Infinity War of TV series that we're going to have. So it'll be really cool to see that being able to play it out over a long period of time, which is the reason why Kevin Feige likes the TV series stream idea over movies, Mm -hmm. you can tell. And I I fully agree for those reasons. So it'll be really cool to see that actually played out over a long period of time where everyone can have their the the time that they deserve and not need to condense everything so um yeah Yeah. very very cool absolutely no i can't wait for that see it's studio heads making comments like this that coincide with or or add more support to what things like you know hbo you know time warner's done with hbo max right because Mm -hmm. they're recognizing that the streaming service is going to be a huge revenue generator for them uh, almost, if not more so, than uh, traditional theatrical release. Exactly. They can tell bigger stories. They can engage audiences for a longer period of time. They can reach more people because it's less likely. There, or sorry, it's 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 less of a time-consuming event where you have to get everybody together, go find a good time to go to the movie, and then actually go. This is content you can consume on your own time, which means mm-hmm. you're going to consume more of it. So yeah, I I agree. I also think um, it's going to put, like right now, we're used to TV shows, like we don't, at least I don't, I feel like this is like generally what people think as well, like I don't like letting go of TV series, so like you kind of expect it to keep going until it gets cancelled for one reason or another, Um, you know, usually the the showrunners, I mean of course it happens, and uh, yeah, I would say it's in good taste whenever it does happen that the show decides to end it itself. But I, I don't think that's the majority of the time. But I think that we're probably going to have to be okay with that scenario happening more often if this is going to be like the new way of storytelling in these big universes. Because I feel like but that's okay very, though, because the yeah. world will continue. Like if an individual series gets canned because it's mm-hmm. gone through the logical story that makes sense. Like I mean, doing the arc of winter soldier and falcon to me this feels like it's going to be a one and done tv series because you're Mm going to tell that story of these two who their only common link was cap and it's a very strained relationship at best yeah trying to figure out you know uh a post cap world combined with you know their relationship and where do they fit now because you know bucky was saved he's gonna have to fight for his spot you know with the quote-unquote avengers like is he gonna, does he want to be part of that you know will they mm-hmm. accept him is everyone going to go mm, i remember how you killed my buddies fuck you you know and then you're going to have uh sam having to do the same thing like now there's pressure on him it's like he's expected to become cap and it seems mm-hmm. like the fact that he's still the falcon in this show he's resi- he's going to resist that he's going to be like yeah. i cannot hold myself up to that ideal that's cap that's not me i have my own identity it's going to be a combination of him going, I want to be me. And uh, at the same time, I can't possibly live up to cap. I have no doubt that they're going to introduce probably a storyline about, um, you know, probably a racial perceptions type thing. Cause I think it's quite mm-hmm. a timely discussion to have. Cause you, you, if you post a poster and say, this is captain America, this is what America likes. And you put a black guy on that. Like, I'm sure that with the way America is right now, that there's going to be an interesting story to tell there too. Um, so I feel like there's so much you can do with those stories and those characters 
uh, of redefining that world, let alone those two. Um, but you need that time to do it. But once they've resolved that, you know, Bucky is accepted. Falcon either becomes Cap or he doesn't. I don't really know that that series continues. I think they get absorbed yeah. into the the greater beast. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's no, you're right. and that's the thing. Yeah, it's just um, like uh, for me, I am the person that that hangs on too long. So like, I'm gonna have to because I think for proper storytelling, like I said, like it it, it is gonna be that case where they are gonna have to end things, and I'm gonna have a hard time letting go of it. So I, yeah. I'm the population that needs to get better about that. Uh, what were you gonna say, Hooch? No, I was gonna say. I mean, he's right. But the other thing I wanted to point out was. You know, one of, one of the issues that you have in the movies or going to the theater is running length of a film, right? No mm-hmm. one wants to sit there for yeah. three or four hours. 100%. But yeah. when you get to the streaming format, you can tell the same story in four or five, maybe even six hours mm-hmm. and then not miss anything. You don't have that continuity issue that everybody talks about. Like, I got too much information. It just did, it seemed to jump around all over the place. You can pace it out. Uh, it sounds or it, it, it feels a lot smoother mm-hmm. in sort of how it's delivered. I, I look at it this way. A movie theater experience is what we got with Game of Thrones season eight. Yeah. In how yeah. Very Trump, it, was, it was it was cut drastically short. They had yeah. to jump all over the place. And we left that feeling as though there was information that was left on the table that we didn't yeah. get. Yeah. When you when you go to a regular st- uh, TV streaming service or whatever then you can fill in those gaps. Um, I, I yeah. It, Granted, they were a TV that, show and they still did it wrong. So, <laughs> well, yes, yes. Well, but, but remember though, they had gone from what thirteen episode seasons down to was it ten or eight or something? I so, the last one, I think. Yeah, yeah. in the last yeah, one. So yeah. they also ran out of content. Of time. Right? Well, they ran out. Of well, the that books. that just goes to show that when those guys had uh content to work from from source material mm-hmm. they were fine and when they yeah. didn't have it they were dog shit and exactly. that's kind of reinforced by the fact that you know they got fired or they quit who really knows what the real story is there from the star wars movies as well because mm-hmm. there's no way that they didn't put through a treatment that didn't, didn't get rejected by disney it sounds yeah. like that all went to yeah. shit in saying yeah. that i mean there's some pretty dumb attitudes in disney at the time you know and <laughs> let me let me say that the memes this week have been fantastic for me uh with mandalorian on this topic where everyone's got like the memes of um what's our boy's name jj abrams uh Mm -hmm. with that quote that he made at the time like when shit was bombing with uh episode seven yeah where he was saying stuff like you cannot introduce a new generation of people to star wars and make them love it while giving you know lip service to the fans and then it's just favreau going hold my beer you know it's just watch me fucking do it with ease so Yeah. yeah What JJ was saying was he couldn't do it. Yeah, that's what he should have said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I can't do it, it can't be done. But I tell yeah. you what, give it to a guy that looks like most gamers, and he'll crush it. You know? Yeah, I will say yeah, exactly. There is there is a few things here. Let me let me because there's some new information that we got that I want to mention real quick. Do we have do we have a time? Is this a good like moment to add in some stuff? I mean, us us rambling to different topics is pretty much the format of this show. <laughs> is that yes, we have a loose structure, but this is you know nerds sitting around talking about nerd shit. So go mm-hmm. for it. So there's two things here, both both Star Wars related. Um, okay. So starting with the J.J. Abrams thing, I did see the. So there is a, a leak. We don't know 100 percent if it's if it's the, the real one or not, but from everything that was released around it, it looks like this was indeed the case. It was a general guideline that um, Abrams put in place for Star Wars after his movie, after Force Awakens. And mm-hmm. uh, I went through and read it, and oh my god, it is so much better than what ended up happening. Yeah, in all that's regards. been out for a while. That's been yeah. out since just after Episode Nine dropped. Mm-hmm. That he started doing like conversations at cons and stuff about. Well, of course, I had a plan, but then we had to, you know, sort of crawl back a lot and undo a lot of Episode Eight when Rianne Johnson went. Oh, you like mystery boxes, do you? Boom. Mm. Well, yeah. So this was like the actual. I, I don't. I don't. I think that this was at least fairly recent because it was like the actual, um, like source material from from what he had, like word for word, like mm-hmm. the script that he had put out. And so it was. It was so much uh, better than than what ended up happening. And you could tell the the strings that he had connected. Just whenever um, Ryan Johnson or whatever his name is, just like you know, said fuck this shit and then cleared the board. 
um, really screwed everything up. But yeah, it was it was going to be so much better, so much more interesting. And, and Luke was particularly badass. And it explained why, like it explained the Mary Sue factor of um, Ray in so many ways. It was basically uh, Luke Skywalker not controlling her, but like helping her through the force because he could tell that she was really strong with it. And Luke Skywalker is so powerful that he was able to kind of manipulate uh, the force around her, which was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so there's so much stuff there that was really cool. I really recommend if anyone w- had a sour taste in their mouth after, um, you know, the end of the series, like definitely go check that out. I'm really upset that basically Ryan Johnson apparently went to Kathleen Kennedy and was and got the like asked if he could throw the script out the guidelines that he had set up and Kathleen Ugh. Kennedy said yes. Why is and this woman still celebrated? Exactly. Um, I have no like fucking the clue. modern successes because like most of the comments, like she was one that basically said that all star Wars fanboys are entitled pieces of shit. Number yep. one. Yep. Um, and then number two, that there wasn't an appetite for star Wars anymore. I don't know how many times I've made fun of that quote on this podcast alone, Yeah, but you know, it's, it's the individual writers and directors and actors mm-hmm. that have brought this from the brink of death because of corporate fucking decisions mm-hmm. by them who go, okay, yeah, but we need a cute character that we can market at Christmas the, this year, guys. Yeah. Like she seems like that person. Absolutely. I like just go, I want you to call it Grogu. It's like, but what, that makes no sense. Why am I going to call it Grogu? Well, we think we can market it. We've done some uh, you know, product testing and, you know, we, we've had, uh, what are those groups called? We've had some focus, focus groups. Uh, focus groups, yeah. And they really like the sound of Grogu. It sounds cute and adorable. You know, let's just make it happen. <laughs> so, yeah, man. That's, yeah. Wasn't I don't know she why she's one? still there. Yeah, Did, this, I Wasn't agree. she the one that sat down with Lucas before yeah the sale and like convinced him that it would be in good hands with her yeah and and also apparently lucas was not like he so he was he was brought on board um this was i remember this was was from a while ago but he was brought on board um to like check out you know and, and go through the the scripts and everything like that just as kind of a um you know professional courtesy i guess but he said mm-hmm. that they ended up taking like nothing he said into account yeah um and well, so i mean Meanwhile, have you seen the behind the scenes footage on um, Mandalorian? Yeah. Like, um, uh, Favreau just invited him by the sound yeah. and just said, hey, man, you want to come that. hang out? Like, we're shooting Star Wars stuff. And there's yeah. like, you've got like shots of, you know, uh, Rosario Dawson laughing around with George Lucas while yeah. they're talking about how adorable Baby Yoda is. Um, yeah. George Lucas is holding Baby Yoda Baby at one Yoda, point. Like, like Favreau is walking past and just goes, holy shit i need to get a photo of this wait wait wait, yeah. wait. and like gets out his phone and takes a photo of it because he yeah. needs it for himself i fall more in love with that man every time i see moments like that because he's me right yeah he sees something cool from his childhood and goes dude let me take a photo you know yeah whereas he's yeah. directing one of the most popular tv shows on the planet that doesn't matter it's like dude you know who that is that is george lucas holding a puppet that i made or you yeah, know maybe exactly. not him but do you know what i mean mm. like he and his guys have made that level of popular yeah so I, yeah, I, yeah, I love man. it, and and that's why like it, it hurts even more the reality of what ended up happening with Kathleen Kennedy allowing Brian Johnson to do that. Um, but you know, it is yeah, what it still, is. Well, more more importantly, defending that it was the right move. And yeah, saying you're right. that you yeah. know people who didn't like it worse. didn't get it. Like you were too yeah. stupid. You know, yeah. it's like no, we disagree <laughs> with it because you took everything about the universe we loved. You took characters that were really important to us. Like look at the reaction of people. Like I've seen a bunch in the last week of people uh, i won't spoil it but people seeing the final episode of the mandalorian Mm -hmm. and like you know where like a daughter or someone's like got their dad on camera and he doesn't know while he's watching that and the last 15 minutes happens Mm -hmm. and just like crying right and just Mm -hmm. joy Mm -hmm. like wait really is it oh yeah (gasps) you know and just seeing that you go i feel that i feel that i connect with that favreau saw it favreau connected with it and he doesn't say if you don't like it, go screw yourself. He, you know, yeah. he's not sitting there going, "Look," he said, "Look, yes, we we are trying to introduce the story and make more people fall in Star Wars, but mm-hmm. we we had to remember the people that got us here, and they're the people that these characters. You have to remember, people grew up with them. People dresses them for twenty years at Comic Cons. Yeah, they remember a time that they were fighting with sticks, that they were pretending were lightsabers, and then push their mate off a." you know a playground onto a mattress while he went no you know like we've all done that shit and you can feel that in this show 
And this is why I'm so excited to be a nerd in 2020, 2021, man, because we now have those people from the old school that yes, of course there's corporate, you know, people profiting the fuck out of this, but they're starting to get out of the way and let the people who love the source material take the helm. And the more they do this, the more money they're going to make because we're going to throw it at them. Like, please take my money. The people who understand the source material know what it, what was marketable about it mm-hmm. of course yeah. so they, they will naturally give you something that you can take to market if your merchandising would you know you got a merchandising hard on like all you know corporate companies do they need something that they can put in front of people to drive toy sales or whatever it is you'll have that mm-hmm. it just it's just automatically going to happen yeah um, yeah i agree it's it, and what we're seeing from you know feige and even feloni is a reverence for the not just the original material, but for the fans as well, which is what you guys are saying. Like they, they understand not just what Star Wars is, but what Star Wars is to its fans and what mm-hmm. the fans are to Star Wars. Yeah. And yeah. and the fact that now, um, like I think a big part here, because Filoni helped literally create what is now Star Wars. Like he was brought in early under the helm of, of George Lucas and they became like best friends creating the story together. Like, so like, and, and he had a huge part to do with the background uh, and um, of, you know, like all of the canonized stuff now with the rebels and clone wars and stuff like that. And so I love the fact that he's actually a part of this. Granted, I will say they did just, this was my other thing that I was going to bring up. Um, apparently enough people were actually like uh, upset about the Ahsoka thing that I mentioned the other day. He did address it actually, okay. apparently with the, the fact that she had this kind of enlightened no 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 she had like this like kind of enlightened um situation yeah 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 this depiction of her um he he gelled it as like it's not necessarily like that particular scene is not necessarily um before the mandalorian that particular scene might be after everything that happens in the mandalorian even though that's not like it's still kind of doesn't jive too well because you saw Hera's son in that. I Chu, I know that you haven't seen it, so you don't you don't know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. right now. But Hooch, I think you have, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you saw, kind of saw Hera's son, which it, timeline wise, that would mean that it would have to be right afterwards. But like he at least like you could tell this was a little bit of a flub. But he's like, I'll try to rectify it as much as I can. It's set. Like I'm just saying, it's set afterwards. Uh, that way, people can. So still I I read want. that interview differently. That it sounds like what he's trying to say is that the Ahsoka storyline that he's writing at the moment mm-hmm. is potentially going to have some before and some after that. Uh, he was particularly talking about that scene, though. Yeah, With he was in, talking a lot about the timeline in that interview. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. read the same thing uh, earlier this week. So okay, I know yeah. I haven't seen all the Rebels, but the way he was sort of talking, I, I guess I read it differently to yourself, that he was saying, I don't want to say too much, because obviously we're talking about the timelines right now for mm-hmm. the show, but, you know, uh, let's just say that, like, where you at right now, like, you don't really know necessarily when The Mandalorian is necessarily set. The end, the very end of Rebels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, because, I mean, like, we have a general timeline, but yeah, like, you basically to canonize it which i i totally get mm-hmm. because like i'm not gonna lie like a uh, ahsoka like og ahsoka which this very much is that's why i like i do like this depiction of soka because it is og so ahsoka um mm-hmm. like that's why I, I do like that and he tried to like kind of rectify that and agree that i guess he because he, he didn't know i think that ahsoka was happening at the time that he created that so i think he's mm-hmm. just kind of bumping that out and just saying like the, you're just gonna have to like deal with this one i know it's a thing i i just like the fact that he um acknowledged it as like a little bit of a, something that like i need to figure out or uh, that he needed to address so that was really cool i liked that he did that and i'm willing mm-hmm. to take the uh the yeah the, the flub on it so but yeah really cool now, stuff going on with star wars excited this isn't necessarily nerdy news uh but something from our era the coming to america coming to america 2 trailer has dropped yes i saw it i'm (sighs) skeptical i think Mm. it it felt like they were they were going back to the well for some of the same like kind of jokes and themes like the barbershop scene the barbershop scene yeah hopefully there'll be some new material in there as well Mm -hmm. but 
you know, after everything that happened in the first one, they come back. Also, we don't know, like, at what point are, are we, you know, 30 years in the future kind of thing? Or is this, this takes place 10 years, 20 years? I don't know what it is. So they didn't really offer enough in the trailer to kind of give me an idea of what to expect outside of, uh, you know, the, the main storyline where Hakeem has a son where mm-hmm. he has to come back to America, which then begs the question, how the hell did that happen? That's my question. That's my lead. Well, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, the Chicky Chase to America, I'm guessing that didn't pan out. And that she moved back, they broke up for whatever reason, and mm-hmm. uh, she was pregnant when, the, when she went back, and he didn't know. I, I could have swore I saw her, a shot of her in the trailer, though. Very possible. It, but it yeah, may have, it, yeah, it may have been like a flashback scene or something where... You know they do have an issue, and she decides to go back or something. But I could have yeah. swore I saw her in that trailer. That that very much annoys me whenever movies do that, though, because I feel like it invalidates the first movie because it was like this grand love story, and then it's like, ah, uh, it didn't work out. Whatever, let's make. Something oh, not necessarily, because I mean you can kind of see that like her having to move to you know this African nation that she's never been to before as an americanized woman and say okay you live here now with our ways without exception you know mm-hmm. remember that he literally had a servant that cleaned his penis of a morning do you know what i mean yeah. like you think she's going to take that well as a uh you know feminist liberal woman from america <laughs> no way so you get there's a very easy yeah. out and you know like ghostbusters to ghostbusters 2 you can see that venkman is a dick and it'd be hard to live with so it makes sense that you know dana would leave as mm-hmm. well so yeah yeah i do i still don't I'm still not a fan of it, but I feel like it invalidates. But I, I totally get that in real life, these things do happen, and I can yeah. see why they do them. But yeah, well, for 50% me, fifty percent of the time over there, from what I've heard, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> but yeah, so oh. I don't have a problem with them going into it. But like for me personally, I'm going to enjoy it less because of that. If if they do go that route, which I think that they are, we'll see. It, yeah. It's fifty percent now. Let's see what happens after the coronavirus. <laughs> do we get out of this pandemic? Let's you think see. it'll be more or less? Oh, I think it'll be a lot more after being around people for 24-7. You really get a chance to see who people are and mm-hmm. be like, I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at how many musicians and actors and that sort of thing have busted up with their like long-term wives this year because they've obviously been forced at home. They're not traveling all the time. Now that it's there all the time, just like, oh, I know who you are now. I didn't like you. <laughs> oh, God, you're the worst, aren't you? <laughs> There's a reason the the saying is absence makes the heart grow fonder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I think that I think it's going to be like a mixed bag. I think it's going to be some relationships that are stronger and some. I think it's going to be about the same rate. I guess. I think the stats on unplanned pregnancies will probably go through the roof. I think I I'll think, agree with you. I in think that you're particular 100% point. correct oh, about that. <laughs> yes, there's going to be a population explosion. Absolutely. <laughs> there should have been a PSA at the start of the pandemic. Just like, hey, be safe do anal you know what i mean like just yeah anyway <laughs> get you that all right ring. let's get into gaming news guys because we've got a lot of stuff we want to do for the patrons towards the end of this show they're putting yep, some yep. special requests for the last show of the year uh so in gaming news uh, it's official guys we suspected this earlier in the year but nerds have won the year video games in 2020 were worth more financially worldwide than sports and movies mm-hmm. combined. Congratulations, we did it. No. Not shocking. <laughs> Long time coming. Now you're going to get like nerds at school going, what's up, you dickhead jock, loser? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Go play Shoving sports, Shoving them in bitch. lockers somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like more so taking them down with some kind of advanced like Home Alone, uh, you know, pulley system trap because that's yeah, how nerds right. roll, man. Yeah. They outthink these dickshits, <laughs> that's you know? True. And that's what stuffs them in the locker. They eventually- yeah, no. <laughs> they convince them to put themselves in the locker with Jedi yeah. tricks. That's how it goes. But hey, yeah, there's but- a hot chick in your locker. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's already turning the corner where, like, I mean, like, these uh, guys that are nerds are starting to get the hot chicks, particularly, it seems like, with Asians. So because yeah. of that money son we talked about this last week we're just I mean, like, but a lot of money that's coming uh, into gaming now but also yeah. i mean I, I guess this is could be a, 
I mean, because of it at the same time, but like, there's also so many, this is totally subjective and like right out of my ass. This is just what I've seen. So like, I, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, but um, like there's so many Asian, like it's, it's much more um, common for like Asian females to game than anywhere else. It seems like. So it seems like it's well, a I think very... gaming in general is just much better accepted in these cultures. I mean, that's like I mean. South yeah. Korea's national sport was Starcraft. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Like, no, literally, it was, it was, it was identified yeah, yeah. as their national sport. Like, it, mm-hmm. it, it rocketed them up my countries of respect years ago when they did that. Because I'm like, yeah. they understand. They get that this is something you can play. And if you're not that good, you can watch it be played by people that are really, really good at it and go, okay, that's very impressive. What that guy mm-hmm. just did. He outthought that guy so hard, you know? Oh, yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's awesome. So yeah, $197.7 billion is what they're projecting video games will have made uh, across the world this year. That includes everything, of course, like hardware, uh, which is about 20% increase on last year. Um, the Nintendo Switch is still crushing it. Obviously, the console launches have done a lot. Um, but yeah, respectively, they beat out uh, film and sports, which obviously, you know, they were both significantly down this year. Yeah, uh, because of the pandemic. But yeah, 175 billion dollars uh, for them. So they lost by about 20 billion. Nerds rule go. is what I'm getting at. Suck Basically. a dick. Suck <laughs> my nerdy white dick. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so no, good, it's super cool. Super cool. All right, uh, we briefly covered on this before. Actually, I don't know if it was in the pre-show or not. Now uh, that CD Projekt Red is being sued by some of its investors, saying that yeah. they believe they were misled about uh, this game just like so many players who bought it on the old consoles who never saw what it would look like on that Mm -hmm. Uh, and they feel like a lot of the profit forecasting was probably based on something that wasn't real so that is happening and you'd have to think they're going to settle that one i couldn't see them wanting to really go to the hilt in court because it'd be pretty hard to defend that they didn't mislead certain people on some of it yeah i I agree i'm sure it'll be settled out of court um yeah. But I do think, yeah, I, I think that they're going to make a good bit of money out of that because I, I 100% agree with the lawsuit on that. So, yeah. The other yeah. thing is they can't, they can't, they don't really have a leg to stand on to fight it because they've already admitted that they made yeah. a mistake both verbally and by offering refunds. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that right, that right there is admission of guilt. And you, like you, distributors you, literally taking it off the shelf because of it as well. Like Exactly. Well, the it, thing it, is he's going to have to prove damages first though. Because that's the thing at the moment. Remember that 13 million copies of this game have been sold. Now, when mm-hmm. the game first launched, we're talking about 8 million pre-orders. So yeah. the 5 million or so that's happened in the, the last week and a half, they knew what they were going to buy. Like mm-hmm. they knew what they were getting. Yeah. And this game will continue to grow for next-gen consoles, for PC players. You're going to see it continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. So, I mean, for them to win that case, though, like it's all well and good to say, oh, we feel defrauded. But at the same time, if they're making money and profit, at the end of the day, they can't prove damages. Like they'd have to say, well, if there wasn't a uh, issue, what could we have made? And that's where you start to get into the hypothetical. And that's where they could lose that case against CD Projekt Red. Um, I guess if they can get statistics on how many copies did they have to refund, that might help them. Mm-hmm. Well, we just talked about how many, you know, the, the numbers of people or the amount of money that gaming made this year because there were less people attending theaters and going to sports, uh, mm-hmm. sporting events. So you don't think there were 5 million idiots who transferred over who just didn't know what they were getting and decided, I'm just going to buy this game. Any other year, any other game? uh maybe but this year i mean you had multiple times to get ready for the launch of cyberpunk i mean you were getting ready for it november last year march this year may this year november this year december this year do you know what i mean like i think it might have even been an august delay as well so it, you knew what this game was going to be supposed to be whatever and in that last uh two or three weeks leading into it you were getting very strong whispers from the review companies um that it wasn't looking great and then of course you had um you got a couple of gaming outlets now as well that are really shitting on CD Projekt Red hard, saying that they, they feel like they misled people with their reviews because they were only given next gen copies. Yeah, yeah, that's I, that was what I was going to bring up. Yeah, they they only sent out the next gen copies. They refused to send out the PlayStation Four and Xbox copies. So mm-hmm. that that was a real sketch move. Looking, I don't know if that was on, you know, I don't know if that was purposely deceptive or not, but it looks really sketchy now looking back. So, um. 
yeah like there's there's definitely like they have a case 100 percent, and i hope that they make a lot of money off of it uh i don't know it'd be interesting to see i mean i'm just reading more up on it now a statement came out today where they're saying they're going to vigorously defend against these claims so mm. I'll good be fucking luck that's all i gotta say to them <laughs> might be uh now tencent who it feels like they own just the world now yeah. um i can't remember tencent do they own riot uh, I don't remember if they own it or if they have a piece of it, but it, it's certainly mm-hmm. one of the two. Like they probably have a piece of it. They, I think they have a piece. I know of they at least have a piece everything. of everything. Oh yeah, I think I think about ten percent of Activision. Um, I know I'm pretty sure they've got a pretty big chunk here. Mm-hmm. Um, but Digital Extremes and Splash Damage are now underneath uh, Ten Cents Banner. So they purchased uh, Liu, L-E-Y-O-U, mm-hmm. and that got them a couple of dev studios in one hit. So they have, uh, to give you an idea, some of the games that these pieces have made. Um, the PC version of the Halo Master Chief Collection was done by these studios. Uh, Gears 5 multiplayer, Gears Tactics, which was a great game, uh, as well as the Coalition. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Warframe is the big one. They now own Warframe. Really? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they've got some big pieces of the gaming puzzle coming through, man. So uh, I, you never know what's good or bad. I mean, more money going into these companies is always good so they can keep making more of the good things. But, you know, it's we've got more scary. monopolies getting closer and closer yeah. and closer to, you know, pushing and squeezing everyone else out. Yeah, that's the yeah. problem is that it's, um, you know, it's it's foreign owned. So, like, we don't have much control on it. And uh Mm-hmm. It, it's definitely approaching you know monopoly status uh because it, it's just acquiring so much shit so yeah mm-hmm. i mean it, it is what it is i guess I, it's i think it's a tomorrow problem <laughs> by definition but yeah it's uh you know at least they pump out company, pretty good games most of the time so if any company changes their name to either blue sun or arasaka i quit i'm out there uh, <laughs> there, there's line the time. line line yeah. in the sand is drawn <laughs> absolutely uh, do you guys see those uh, shots from the set of the Halo uh, TV series I sent you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, it was pretty cool, actually. I I liked it. I think it looked good. I was surprised to see. It looks like they're going to do a mix of CGI and more sort of uh, you know traditional uh, prosthetic, plasticky kind of things because they've got obviously a very small photo uh, of one of the. What do you think that is? Is that Hive or is that one of the um, uh, oh, what do they call those guys? Starts with C. It's the, the alien, Covenant. Uh, Covenant. Yeah, that definitely looks like a Covenant hand to me, not a Hive hand. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, but I think I think that looks great. I think it looks really good. Well, I mean, you you saw with with Mandalorian that practical effects usually mm-hmm. they they work yeah. better and yep. they're more believable and it also gives something the actors to react to. Uh, better than it would be just some puppet or something like that like you have puppets but then you have like this is a thing on a stick and you're reacting to this thing on a stick yeah that we're going to make look better yeah. at least with the puppet you get dimensions you get an understanding of you know where things are i think this will um, be easier because i think it'll be like yeah i think it'll be like actual suits and I, I would say just from this picture that this looks i mean it looks very good i actually think that it's one of the better um like prosthetics that i've i've seen i think it looks very cool now, in all my nerd scouring over the last several months, uh, mm-hmm. actually, kind of start right back through last year, I didn't realize that they cast Master Chief. Like, last year, they cast oh, Master Chief. Oh, I didn't know Chief. that either. Did Who you is know it? this? No. Who is it? Hooch? Yeah, I think Hooch? we talked about that, right? The casting of actual Master Chief? I don't remember yeah, this, because this is big I, news. I thought something had mentioned... Somebody had mentioned that he was playing. I don't remember. You're probably right, but it is Pablo Schreiber who is one of those guys that pops up in a few things. Um, he's probably in most recent times, you'd know him from American Gods Hebrew. He's the guy uh-huh. that plays the Irish leprechaun. Oh my God, I fucking love him, dude. Yeah, so he's, he's Master great. Chief. Um, oh my, I'm so pumped If you're more mainstream that. content in Orange is the New Black, he's the porn stash mm-hmm. um, prison guard who is really hateable in that show. Yeah, very So hateable. it's an interesting casting for Master Chief um but i mean the guy certainly got chops so i guess we'll see 
I, I think, um, like, don't get me, I think, like, his uh, role in Orange of the Blue Black, it's, it's detestable, but he played it really well. That's why it is so detestable. Oh, for sure. And, uh, but honestly, seeing him in American Gods, I saw him in a few things and I was like, oh, he's, he's pretty good. I always liked him whenever he popped up for very small roles. But seeing him in American Gods, like, he instantly became my favorite character in American Gods. He's so mm-hmm. good at acting. I um, mean, seeing that emotional side of him, too, was really cool. Granted, he's a master he's chief here, so emotional side of it probably won't come into play too much, but um i'm super excited about that 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 makes me feel really fucking good about this good for them we'll have to wait and see man i mean you you never see master chief with his helmet off so we got another what is it a pedro pascal thing right i was about to say exactly the same thing (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. i still like i just hope he doesn't throw a fit about it because like i i've still like not i just thought it wasn't as organic as it should have been for for mandalorian just think, so. oh, people need to see my mustache man look well, at I need this the helmet stash, off stash bro <laughs> look at this porn stash bro oh yeah <laughs> but yeah it, very cool star citizen why is why is it a meme explain it to hebrew why is star citizen a meme give it to me uh because it's n- never it's 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 almost like duke nukem level right mm-hmm. like where it was like hey this game's coming out 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 <laughs> and it's promising the world as well oh yeah and it has since 2012 yes now this year it's like cyberpunk and i cannot believe this is true was the biggest fundraising year that they've had for this game, Hooch. Mm-hmm. Still. In fact, people donated 60% more to this game than they did last year. So for those who don't know the history, this game has been completely crowdfunded by a lot of people who were sort of, you know, a big deal in other gaming companies back in the day. And they wanted to make this universe where it was seamless, where you would get in your spaceship you would you know toggle all the flight things close the landing bay doors fly up into the atmosphere with no cut scenes you would have to fly go through the atmosphere switch engines from you know uh atmospheric to you know galactic whatever i don't know what, what do you call it fly to the next planet go down land it get out get on your bike which you would drive out of the landing bay which you had to open the doors uh go down into a cave system shoot a bunch of dudes and then get back on the ship go and collect a bounty they want it to be a universe that you could basically feel like you lived in and you were living that you know adventure of being a bounty hunter or a spice uh, a space trader or you know so many different things like the ambition was high to say the least but the early stuff that they were developing it sounded amazing and then what happened is on their kickstarter is that they achieved it and over exceeded it by millions of dollars inside hours so they said, okay, you guys have done this. Uh, given you've given us so much more money than we needed, we're now going to add the following few features to the game. But now that we're thinking about that, this is actually really cool. If we add, we'd love to add this, this, and this to the game. So if you guys get us to this milestone for money, we will add that stuff to the game as well. And it's been this never ending, the more money we get, the more cool shit we're going to make. Have a rough guess, Hebrew, how much money was donated to this game, A, this year, and B, ever uh so this year i'm gonna say a million okay significantly mm. higher mm-hmm. um four million try 80 80 million just this year yep. just this year this game oh my god since 2012 remember this is 100 percent crowdfunded has uh-huh. raised 338.5 million dollars holy shit dude as of december 2020 and that the running joke is, is because insane. they keep giving these goalposts of well if we get to this next thing we'll add this then we'll add this then we'll add this like there's a playable alpha that's been evolving for eight years but this game has still not gone into beta and we still don't know when or if it will so i don't know how people are still investing it. in this after all this time on good faith given how many games have come through so now it's also being cut up into multiple games too so there's squadron Uh 42 which is a single player game set in that universe um which is kind of like a he wants it to be a spiritual successor to wing commander uh which would be really cool if he pulls it off and then of course there'll be the open world uh multiplayer which they're talking about instead yeah. Okay, so there's there's two things I have to say about that. And that's A, I wonder if a big part of it is sunk cost fallacy, 
where they're just like, holy shit, like I have already invested so much money. I'd be interested to see like if it's new people um, putting in or if it's generally a lot of the same people putting more money in. Um, mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I feel like some of it might be sunk cost fallacy. That's like just one explanation I can think of out of this crazy scenario to try to justify it. And um, the other thing is... Like, I feel like there has to be, and I feel like this is the situation with all games that have really long-running development periods. Like, Mm -hmm. at a certain point, I feel like all of the stuff that you did eight years ago, whenever you started, is now old, and then you have to do it over again. And I wonder if, like, at a certain point, it's, um, like, you get into this never-ending cycle of having to re-update older things because it's taking so long. Because video game technology is certainly far better than what it was eight years ago at this point Mm -hmm. so i don't i wonder if like that's part of it like it's just turning into this revolving door so yeah i I don't know but either way that that's absolutely insane that was not what i was expecting i thought i was overshooting at a million um for this year uh i would have never guessed 300 million the like total that's fucking or almost 400 million i think you said yeah so, yeah because I'm, I'm still living in hope that this is like star war gal star wars galaxies with better graphics uh without the jedi because that that original game when it released was pretty cool in that format so i'm just hoping that uh they don't do this game dirty and it's i just funny say man how, like it's yeah. funny how your hope for this is a game that was already created that's slightly better and it's been eight years now and 318 million dollars just to try to mostly recreate something at this point oh, i mean in spirit i mean obviously i'm expecting that with like what was promised cyberpunk graphics you know what i mean like right, but right, as right. you say that's the part that concerns me the most is that like if they started building their engines back then yeah um you know which you know 4k gaming wasn't even a thing really then like it was exactly, kind of the yeah. well maybe super rigs could do it but what you know why build something for that that doesn't exist right um you Crisis. know well yeah that's <laughs> that's it's but did they build that engine though i don't think so so yeah, we'll have to wait yeah. and see i mean that's what we've been waiting and seeing for eight years uh if we yeah, don't I'm, see a beta for that in 2021 um again I'm, I'm thinking that too many big big projects that were too big to fail have now i think yeah, that game will be under i wonder pressure. if they can legitimately just keep up this like oh we're adding new stuff so it's gonna take longer thing forever people keep giving literally more money every year for that (laughs) it's like it's like the uh this is basically like one of those uh you know offshoot christian churches that demands like 10 percent of your money every year to be a member like this is the cult video game yeah yeah exactly and that's how it's gonna end it won't (laughs) release it'll just be like hundreds of thousands of people who donate to this committing suicide you know yeah well it is an alpha stage right now you can spend 40 or 80 dollars to play it uh in its current alpha stage hmm yeah well look i mean i i because i put my kickstarter in shit like when it first came out like maybe 20 30 bucks i think it was so mm-hmm. i have a ship right now i could go and play it <laughs> any time i want um but part of me has been like if i ever play that game i want it to be the full release but i probably should yeah. jump in and give it a run especially because i've got the flight sticking that all here so if it's worth yeah. i might i might even donate to, i know this is funny because i just said that but well you've got well, your big boy dollars as well man like you can actually yeah. the more you donate like people have gotten custom ships built for them they've donated enough That's money cool. dude if it's is if it? it's like a decent gameplay, like and I, I like the concept of what's going in. It's funny how now we're talking about me donating money to. <laughs> we, <laughs> I fed into the shitting on them now. two minutes ago. Yeah. 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 Well, but, I'll tell like, what, I, maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll download it and maybe like when I stream again in 2021, we'll make that one of the things we take a look at. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd be interested to see what it looks like. So yeah, you. Yeah. We'll you call test my that January streams a story of hope. You know, games yeah. that we hope release one day or an old hope. <laughs> instead of a new yeah <laughs> wait a minute what what, what does i see uh, wait this is being released by black gold corporation wait a minute uh, that's what you did there <laughs> still be better than that uh all right before we get into our what we're excited the most about to potentially play in 2021 delays pending hooch you said you got a quick update on gotham knights maybe uh yeah so there was a um, was it like over Twitter or something like that? It was what people are considering a slight, uh, maybe slip or release of when uh, it's going to come out. There was a an image that was shared from the Gotham Knights team that has a poster in the background of the Flying Graysons, and they're showing up. Uh, the dates on there are 
Tuesday, July 16th through, was it Sunday, July 21st? So they matched those dates up with the calendar dates in 2021 and they don't match. However, if you combine July 16th and July 21st, you get July 16th, 2021, which is a Friday, which is when games come out. So there's speculation that Gotham Knights may be releasing on July 16th, 2021. Hmm. Let me be the first to say I expect that to be like. Uh, <laughs> not because of wb because they've been pretty good but just that's where we're at now yeah well i mean we'll see um obviously i can't i can't go into i don't know anything so i can't confirm nor deny that nor would i uh but i i mean we haven't had a lot of I mean, we haven't really released anything this year so that we haven't really had a whole lot of slip-ups but we'll see mm. we'll see I'm, I'm hoping it sticks to that because yeah having that game to play in july yes yeah funny. i mean that definitely sounds good and yeah, i sooner do the dream. better well actually no maybe not when it's finished is when it should be released <laughs> yeah i think yes, I guess that's absolutely. the key for games now when it's finished yeah 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 now 2020 just being the i don't know genitalia scarage year that we've just had like it's mm-hmm. just been gross it's been a shit year uh for so many people so we need hope we need something to look forward to in 2021 mm-hmm. and there are a lot of games that uh even with delays are very likely to launch in 2021 we're going to go through some of them right now about the things that we're the most excited about uh the first one is avowed i don't know if you guys remember this trailer that we saw from earlier this year uh but this will be the first official game that obsidian one of my favorite studios uh mm-hmm. will be releasing under the xbox umbrella uh they made outer worlds and fallout new vegas by the way and um doing a little bit of stuff from pillars of eternity i think too i can't remember what else they've been yeah they were they were pillars of eternity mm-hmm. uh avowed was that one that hebrew i remember you going dude this looks like a really really slick skyrim yeah yeah, yeah I, like I, I really high res so, I mean, anything that Obsidian pulls out with their kind of sense of humor and world building track record, this is one of my like most wanted for sure. Yeah, I would say so. Like, I mean, uh, the um, the gameplay that they had and everything like that looked really slick, and it definitely has that feel of of Skyrim. So, and I mm-hmm. I want another one of those. Like, it's been a while since I've had something like that in my hands. So, yeah, I I definitely would. I can't wait to play this game. I, I hope it comes out. And this was planned to be 2021. Yeah, 2021. Uh, yeah, I hope it sticks to that. But we'll see. <laughs> I, I'm putting like uh, like an asterisk on every release date um, for basically the next two years, pretty much. Yeah. Now we did see a lot of this recently, so I'm assuming it's probably very likely to be on time. June 22nd in 2021 is back for blood. I think all three of us are probably yeah. end up playing that game together oh yeah oh um, absolutely yeah i can't fucking wait for that game that game was such a cool yes. party game dude i i'm so excited for that Heck yes. uh yeah uh okay. death loop uh looks cool as fuck been delayed multiple times now uh that was supposed to be one of the launch titles for the ps5 mm-hmm. correct yes that was originally supposed to be one of the launch titles um yep. so now ps5 and pc i think that was a deal with the epic store from memory uh for may in 2021 yeah really mm-hmm. uh, looks good i mean like it, it yeah it definitely looks good graphically um yeah but well i'm i'm skeptical on the actual gameplay and if it's going to be like too repetitive so we'll see mm. yeah it's a fine line with those sort of games where like you can orchestrate a very clever like kill but if you have to do that and there's no like guns blazing options sometimes those stealth games aren't for everyone exactly so i think giving you the flexibility it seems like they want you to use to complete your objectives i hope that's what it is that they they let you play in that sandbox they don't put you on rails so i have to wait and see yeah uh did either of you guys play dying light yeah i did i did not i love that game yeah Yeah. it was really good i had a good time with that one wasn't that one of the wasn't that one of the games that was offered from Epic? Uh, the original Dying Light, if it was, dude, get a, you definitely should have got it. Yeah, it's it's basically oh, like oh, parkour yeah. zombies. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yep. And if you find a, a circular saw and you find a stick, uh-huh. a new weapon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, so it, it I really sounds like it was. 
Yeah. It was a more hardcore. Um, oh God, what was the one on Xbox? Was it what, Frank State Wells? of the Game? No, the comedic Days one. Gone? The one. No, God, why can't comedic I remember the name one. of that dang game? Yeah, it was more funny. It was stuck in the mall. Uh, for oh, the first one. Uh, was it Dead Beat? No, not Dead Beyond. Dead Rising. Dead Rising. Yeah. Oh, Dead, Dead Rising. Dead Rising. Yeah. Uh, there were some comedic beats in there, but it was yeah. more about the main story is you're kind of like a merc uh, that has to pull off missions and shit. And this yeah. particular one, uh, you get dropped in by a corporation into a city that has been walled off. Uh, okay. And your mission is basically uh, to do something for that corporation. But then over the course of it, you see what the reality is for the people that are stuck living in this world. Um, and it's very much got some elements almost of um, Left for Dead, actually. Oh, in yeah, the sense sure. that when night falls, the zombies mm-hmm. go, berserk. And if you are not <laughs> in a safe house, you are fucked. Yeah, dude. Mm. So you first, have to like first time run night. away from these zombies. Yeah. Yeah. First time at night is always an experience in that game. It's really, really fucking cool. Yeah. But visually okay. great game. Gameplay was good. Um, the melee was surprisingly good, even on PC. A lot of these games get melee really wrong. Uh, but with a lot of the crafting where you can make this the most ridiculous melee weapons this was really really good yeah um does have the thing that like once you've used a weapon a certain amount of times it does break i've never yeah, loved that in games but in that world it actually oh, makes a lot of sense, sense. so yeah and as i said the story was quite good so i'm looking forward to the second one if it's Same. even if it's just like an expansion of what they've already done that's mm-hmm. fine with me but that, from what i've heard they've been really working on the engine so yeah keen as yeah, I hope I hope that um, that is the case because it looks pretty I did see the trailer that they put out not too long ago it was the or not the trailer it was actually like the first like 30 minutes of gameplay or something and mm-hmm. it, it honestly didn't look that impressive it looked very much like the same exact game just you know different content so I hope that they've kind of amped that up a bit I think that that might have been just alpha gameplay or whatever but yeah um, I'm curious to see what state it's in now because that was a few years ago yeah, well, they were going to get it out pretty quick. Like, so I wouldn't be surprised to see if it was the same engine. I don't expect too many graphical dial ups because, again, that game was pretty good was, at pushing the envelope for with graphics time. cards at the time, anyway. So, yeah, yeah I think it's going to be fine. Um, we talked about Star Citizen, but one of the other big memes over the last year or so is Elden Ring. Do you guys remember what this is? No. No. This was that big announcement a couple of years ago at sort of the height of Game of Thrones fame that George R. R. Martin had teamed up with a company to release a uh, an action RPG by the guys that made uh, Soulsburn, Soulsborn. So yeah, George R. R. Martin was saying he was going to write like the greatest video game ever. And they had this reveal and literally no information at all has come out about it since. So like oh, wow. every t- every expo now you'll get people going, yeah, but will they talk about Half Life Three? Like we're at that level of meme now. It's like, <laughs> what about Elden Ring? <laughs> That's funny. What is it slated oh, for currently? Uh, well, originally they were talking about like 2021, but the fact we've seen nothing on it, I think that's gone. I don't think that's going to happen this year. Yeah, I'd imagine if there's been no update for a while, 2021's off the table. For sure. Uh, Everwild is definitely a game we've talked about before from yes. Rare Studios. That game looks great. Very good. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. This is one of my like, um, like probably top five excited for games. Yeah, so that's your next year. Uh, this one Ooh. might interest you. Uh, Fable? <laughs> oh, God. I cannot wait, dude. I've been tracking Fable for like such a long time now for everything. I'm so mm-hmm. excited for this fucking game. It's insane, dude. Um I don't think well, it's the fact out. that it is hired a new writer, I'm like, mm-hmm. where is it though? Like, where is I, it? I, it feels like it's further away than 2020. I don't think they've it's only 2020. Just in like a new head writer, 2021. Yeah, or, I'm sorry, 2021. Yeah, I don't think it's 2021 at all. I think that this is uh, late 2022. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, like, I I do know unless they're revamping the story, like they did have a um, uh, a leak like just before they made the announcement for fable well not just for but like three months before the announcement of fable mm-hmm. four where it was like this um kind of like broken down like re- like you know recorded on a cell phone trailer um for the game and it had a bunch of different aspects about it and it was so basically like what the story was at least was that um this mad king kind of broke down albion to like multiple different planets 
and there was a lot of time travel involved and stuff like that still mm-hmm. kept the same like um you know it was no guns they reverted back to no guns thank god um and it was still so it was still like that time period but mm-hmm. yeah it was like a very different scenario i'm not sure if they're continuing to do that because like all the old characters will still were still there as well like um teresa and stuff like that and the, the guild and you use demon doors to cross planets and stuff like that it was um a pretty interesting setup that they had but uh yeah i'm not sure if, if if they just hired a new writer for it i'm not sure if maybe they're keeping that direction or or whatnot or pivoting or whatever but um i am super excited about it though like i think it's going to be a killer game no matter what just because the uh creator the developer team behind it um is one of the objectively best developer teams that's made consistently good series with forza so i'm pumped it's wednesday far cry 6 uh i mean far cry is always they're always going to be a decent game at least like they're never going to be like groundbreaking awesome dude you need to play this game right now kind of game yeah. but it's the ones where every time there's a steam sale i'm like oh shit i never did play far cry 5 yeah now's the time you know what i mean like they're always good games never played a far cry game in my life never been interested I know, oh. I'm, in the, I'm actually in the same boat it's weird yeah i came late to the new uh wolfenstein and love yep. those two. Oh yeah so yeah I, and i've heard some pretty good things about the far cry the late the most recent far cry releases so mm-hmm. you know i i would like to get a chance to try that out when we we hit a gaming lull and there isn't anything out like mm-hmm. right now that i'm currently playing and uh, i need to go yeah. back through the catalog well the main villain in this just to keep the theme that he is the main villain in every show we watch now is uh giancarlo esposito who is yes. Uh, the big guy at the end of the boys. He's the big guy at the end of the Mandalorian. He's just everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's pretty cool. Uh, if he's in it, I'm sure that'll be creepy. I'm as just fuck, not a the villains big fan of him. Really make those games. Do you remember Revolution, the TV show? Mm, no. Was that the one where like the power had gone out everywhere? Electronics. All the electronics had stopped working. He was in that, wasn't he? He was in that. Uh, he, he, really, he leads like the mob that kind of rose up to take over when the world went dark, right? He, he well, not leads it, but he's part of the part of the main faction who is in charge of the United States, or not maybe not not the U.S., but a section of it or whatever. But he plays one of the the henchmen. Yeah, I do remember that. I think I watched maybe like three or four episodes. And I remember hearing it got canceled, so I was like, "What's the point?" And I dropped it. <laughs> you you didn't miss anything trust me oh okay that's good to know yeah yeah uh final uh, fantasy 14 is going to get another expansion in february um that's one of those games that if we don't get the next big mmo coming out next year i think i might dip my toe back in especially because with cross play i'm kind of hoping that with february we kind of see like the pc speckable version released to ps5 because if mm-hmm. I could play that game like really stunningly on my PS5, mm. I think I would like to try. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I, I think that would work because it mm-hmm. played more like an action game anyway. It did. So Yeah, it felt pretty good on console. I mean, I did like it more on PC because, mm-hmm. you know, obviously being able to customize things to your MMO mouse like I always do with those games, you know, it just felt better. But uh, yeah. It could work. Hmm. Who knows? Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, mm-hmm. This might pique some people's interest, but also with uh, Fable, there is um, uh, so this one guy who is usually very, very well informed. Like, does a lot of the predictions for lineups for games and everything like that. Always has mm-hmm. a lot of good information. Um, he did say that Fable Four is supposed to be actually an MMO, so. We'll have to see if that is the case or not. But he said that that is is going to happen with Fable 4, that it is an MMO, actually. Man, the way it's going, like, 2022 could end up being, like, the resurgence of, like, having some really good competitive MMOs. Because we've Mm. got that lurking out there. We've got the Lord of the Rings MMO that Amazon's working on. Like, I mean, if they really knock that out of the park, that's a strong IP for an MMO um then of course we've got um yeah just all these games i just think that that's something that's lacking right now anyway oh lol is what i'm thinking of league of legends yeah 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 well it was it was the thing that everyone tried to copy for Mm -hmm. a a hot minute and then everyone kind of got burnout because exactly 
all these worlds they tried to do i mean there's a couple of like side ones that have got potential like ashes of creation and things like that but i don't know man it's really gonna be something special to i think make people want to dive in and stay there because all these mmo light games like destiny 2 have kind of taken over the format now yeah Yeah, i I would just yeah looter shooters yeah i would i mean i definitely like i i i'm dying for a good mmo now like uh, on Mm -hmm. console um would be fucking great especially so like i i think Mm -hmm. i'm really needing it but yeah there was a big burnout phase and hopefully they're now just getting back into it and there'll be a research i'm not sure if there will be um Mm -hmm. you know burnout again who knows but like that's definitely something i feel like i'm missing and that gaming is missing in general right now especially during Mm -hmm. a pandemic i think i think part of the problem with your traditional mmo is that the gameplay isn't as engaging Mm -hmm. so you know you need that sort of like actiony mmo like you have with final fantasy 14 where you're you're playing an mmo but you're interacting with it as though it's an action adventure game Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i i I agree like a usually narrative um like suffers for the mmo content so um i mean at least that was the case for what i felt a lot of the mmo games were uh that was the downfall but yeah i mean if they if they do it right like i I, which i feel like they should be able to do um then yeah we'll 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 see i definitely want it to happen though i want a good one (laughs) definitely now i'm going to speed up here because there is quite a few games that could come out this year um Mm -hmm. so yeah just yes or no pumped uh ghostwire tokyo oh yeah super pumped yeah uh halo infinite uh very pumped I'm going to play the hell out of that game. Hooch? I've never been a big fan of Halo. I think ah. I played the, I played the first Halo, got to the, the library, mm-hmm. turned it off, never went back. Shit, dude, really? <laughs> dude, the library pissed me off. It just... Wow. Like, you just copy-pasted this whole thing, and then you're sending all these enemies after me, like, I'm done, I'm out. I have legitimately never heard of anyone playing the first one and stopping. Like, <laughs> I have... I, I, have no idea how you did that i could see that for yeah, some of the later two ones. i was three onwards i'm kind of with hooch here that's like eh, well, that's okay. what i'm saying like like for the first one though though like i could not like mm. i couldn't imagine anyone doing that later on yeah for sure but i yeah. think i went i just i just found different games to play to take up my time crazy dude. and that's the thing like you think about that era too like halo and halo 2 like halo that, that was kind of like it defined the that console like people yeah. bought xboxes to play halo because there was nothing really like that yeah and then the multiplayer especially it was that generation supposed to be goldeneye for multiplayer yeah. um it's just that like on one console that kind of sucked but having multiple consoles was awesome so yeah, yeah. then halo 2 was the first mass uh like multiplayer uh for console yeah shooter shooter game at least there I, there's uh, a, a real quick i have a funny story that um i went to visit my brother once in mm-hmm. uh toronto and he he had been playing halo for weeks and fired it up and i told him i was like i don't play this game and i crushed him just just absolutely crushed him <laughs> and he just it wasn't until he pulled out the pistol which was all sorts of cheap because you could basically use it as a sniper rifle uh and mm-hmm. that was the only time he was able to beat me on one particular map and i recognized it immediately I said this this gun is way too overpowered and sure enough in halo 2 they nerfed the pistol yeah yeah it used to be called the sniper pistol yeah, exactly yeah. exactly so yeah pistol was so op that's just, well, yeah, was. working and, as advertised what's your problem <laughs> <laughs> so I, just, I mean it just validated everything i had said like the only time you can beat me is if you have that pistol in a particular map that i can't hide very well yeah mm-hmm. yeah that was like the that was the, the golden gun basically in that game the fucking yes. pistol was amazing yeah they toned, uh, yeah, toned exactly. that way down in the second one but yeah Mm -hmm. uh hitman 3 is on its way uh so that studio i think this is the first one that is uh them as a standalone since they left their parent company so that could be pretty cool uh humankind is going to be a new civilization style game which i'm always up for more competition in that space um they're trying to add in some more win conditions like for example the most famous uh, faction can actually win as well so if you reach a certain amount of fame or infamy across the world you can actually win it that way uh, there is a trailer out for that for humankind which looks pretty good uh, this one goes without saying it's massively hyped uh, but the trailers look pretty great is Hogwarts Legacy oh yeah of course I'm, that's I'm due in 2021 damn 
Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's the current slated, yeah. Next yeah. year, I think we said a few times recently, Warner Brothers is just set up to win 2021. It's theirs to lose, to be honest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, absolutely. I just, if they have I, three bangers back to back, they could have like three out of the five on Game of the Year list comfortably. Yeah, yeah. I just really, That's like true. I know that we're not getting it now. Like I think it was confirmed that this is not the case, but like honestly, Harry Potter MMO sounds so fucking cool. Um, dude i'm, I'm upset yeah. that that will not be the case <laughs> but yeah let's it, hope it evolves yeah yeah true it works it, it absolutely works yeah Ugh, man. yeah man oh, well wasted potential okay uh lego <laughs> star wars uh the skywalker saga so the whole nine uh movies will be under like one kind of big star wars game uh sorry, lego game mm-hmm. so those games are always like nice fun little games uh the new mass effect now when i see new mass effect i'm pretty sure all this is going to be is the remastered i don't think that new game they just announced is going to be this year yeah i don't think so either that'd be crazy i'd actually be very um wary of that like i would say like there's not enough time uh, to make a good mass effect game in this short amount of time so yeah uh the near series is being rebooted with near replicant so they're redoing the first game so they're giving it kind of the uh final fantasy 7 treatment uh persona 5 strikers is coming mm-hmm. in feb 2021 okay. uh, i don't really know what this is other than the fact it's going to be a continuation of that game which a lot of people seem to really love yeah so i guess persona we'll see was a really good where game. it comes uh, Prince of Persia The Sands of Time remake that could be really good like that game with modern graphics yeah 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 you can't lose with that one I guess true no. yeah that was pretty fun um, you guys probably won't remember this trailer we watched it a few episodes back for Project Athia uh, so brand new action adventure IP coming out of Square Enix uh, so the main character is kind of in like a foreign fantasy world uh, lots of big mountains uh with like a broken world below so she has traversal and supernatural abilities to fight monsters and a dragon shows up during the trailer uh yeah it kind of looks like a skyrim meets uh horizon is probably the best way to describe that trailer so it's got potential and it's square enix who Mm. most of the time get it right uh unless you ask keeper so uh, yep, true that. <laughs> Except when they team it with Crystal Dynamics. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil Village is coming. That'll be a big deal. Stalker 2. Uh, yeah, I was never a big fan of that Stalker thing. I always thought it was way overhyped. Yeah, is that the one where he's like the, like, not ghost creature or something like that? No, it's just kind of like a, a sort of generic FPS set in like Chernobyl, I think, isn't it? Oh, yeah. never mind then. Yeah. Th- totally different game. Yeah, well, I mean, get it done, right? If you make like a really haunted Chernobyl environment right now, mm-hmm. that could be pretty cool with like next gen tech. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Center was Saga Hellblade Two. I I still really need to play that first one. I heard nothing but really good things about it. It kind of seemed like a psychological God of War, if you will. Mm. Um, Starfield, we haven't heard anything about for at least a year now, uh, which is the new MMO that Bethesda was working on. Um, and multiple reasons to get excited for that because it'll go straight to Game Pass too. Oh, that's nice. Because yes. they own Bethesda now. Uh, as well as Elder Scrolls Six. We're kind of expecting that one of those games should drop in 2021. The question is, would it be both? That is the question. I'm guessing Oof. neither at this rate. I'm I mean, betting if, one if will. it's both... I'm hoping a lot of these games actually do slip because we're getting a really crowded 2021 already. Yeah, we're going to have the anti-2020 as far as releases go. And we had some <laughs> strong releases this year. Like, don't get me wrong, there were some great games this year. But uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's going to be a big packed year. And they're probably the biggest ones at the moment. A lot of the other ones are looking more likely 2021, so I won't go through them now. But yeah, man, going to back it up with another big year of gaming by the sounds. Yeah. Heck Can't to wait. the yes. Get, get, make more money than uh, movies and sports combined again <laughs> ha, when they're all back that'd be pretty good yeah all right let's go into some requests from patrons so we put a shout out about a week ago and said look you guys have uh stuck with us uh as we sort of you know started this new project venture with uh this podcast and uh, is there anything that you would like us to do in the last episode of the year uh that we can try and fit in without doing a whole six hour podcast at the top of it so number one from Jackie two four six, we had him ask, "Can we do a review of all of the fuckwits of the year?" So that was a very temporary segment. I only went for about what three weeks. 
where <laughs> yeah. we just kind of had assholes popping up in the nerd community uh of you know just really exceptional bullshittery i'm trying to remember who we covered we covered old mate from stadia yeah who basically said streamers mind. should pay the pay for the rights to stream games that they should owe the developers money every yeah, time they the stream a portion should go back to them to which the internet said fuck, fuck off you yeah he was australian mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. so the uh, <laughs> there's not well it always upsets me when an australian does something dumb because there's not that many of us really <laughs> right? right so when we get a high profile fuckwit from my own country it just hits home you know yeah. just like <laughs> russell crowe goes out makes gladiator yep oh proud he's australian goes out throws a phone at someone oh, he's a fucking kiwi that bloke <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works yeah so yeah, he's the one that came to there mind. was I, I don't remember the other ones um you know we had a lot of i think we like just decided to disqualify I know Vin him. vince mcmahon was definitely up there this year with the way that he forced yes. wrestlers to wrestle in like conditions that they were primed mm. to get coronavirus early number one and then number two with the way he fucked over streamers uh yeah you know trying to limit any possible income they could get in a year that really fucked their live show ability vince mcmahon was definitely one of the greatest pricks of the year for sure yeah. mm -hmm. then there's nintendo mm -hmm. suing that one chick for her name uh, oh. i can kind of see that well, i mean i don't th i don't think I don't that's, think that's of the a, winner uh, a i don't think that's the year. winner of fuck what of the year that's corporate I, douchery that's at its finest but that chick was literally like selling shirts with pokemon on it i mean yeah you kind of had that coming love you are allowed to do that though as long as you do the art for it uh this looked like it had been ripped straight off a, a game bro if like, that it was wasn't the case even then a... that's not allowed but yeah if there's like you are allowed yeah. to if like you know you make the art for something you are allowed to sell it yeah like um, if they put like one of those little black caps on the top and said no it's not pikachu it's pikachu you know what i mean like you can see oh, I, I see what you're trying to do there you know i mean it's very anti-semitic but maybe don't be a dick about it but you know what i mean like if you try to at least do something different uh yeah. i can see what you're saying but now that that woman herself could potentially like she's probably on nintendo's fuck of the year list yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's yeah. true i would say um but she's she, that at least is up there it certainly doesn't win but i think that that's there mm. there had to have been somebody else i think that there were several covered. others i just i can't remember yeah. everyone that there was a lot i mean because that's the thing we're trying to keep it in the sphere of gaming i remember that uh, a very large population of the gaming community uh, uh fuck wits fuck wits of the year just by the way that uh you know we treated studios or actors or voice actors this year uh i mean there was a lot of shit that you know people are trying to earn a living and and you know sending death threats because you didn't like the way they voice acted someone in a game is pretty fucked yeah you know I, or sending death threats because a game got delayed by a month you i think know? i know who who my uh nomination for fuckwit of the year is okay gamers gamers in general just because yeah. yeah. they've consistently uh, disappointed me throughout the year when something goes wrong they they do the the, the worst possible thing to make us all look bad well they jump now, straight to I, death threats. all gamers i would say so that's, let me that's yeah. let me let me take it back right you can highlight portions of a community and when we generalize like that you're going to end up using the extremes as examples and most of the time people go to the negative you know we're not going to the millions of dollars that have gone to charities this year from streamers donating everyone seems to forget pretty quickly the fundraising that was done by twitch streamers in january when most of australia was on fire and we're like oh shit that's probably the worst thing that's going to happen this year you know i mean so much money was raised by gamers for the australian yeah. bushfires you know um yeah. charities we see it all the time you hear stories where you know someone in like a, a twitch or gaming community falls ill or you know god forbid someone in their family passes away and you see these people who have never met that person never spoken a physical word to that person band together and do what they can to you know make sure someone's okay or safe like i mean even um you know roy who i did the previous podcast with for a specific game um you know uh, he was doing a podcast by himself um you know around the same time we started this and he was doing it for a couple of weeks and said that things were going really well and then people stopped hearing from him so i started to get messages daily from people saying hey man have you been able to get in touch with him? I'm getting really worried. And the next thing you know, there's a coordinated effort with like me and seven guys going, okay, 
I remember in like episode 47 of that podcast, he mentioned this burger place in this town and that was near his mom's place. And we're like putting all the details together. We end up tracking down two phone numbers for the guy to try and check in to make sure he's okay. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the level that people go to in this community with people who just do the same thing that we do. You don't see those big examples being shown up. So I'm going to have to battle you so hard to say gamers are the fuckwits of the year because some gamers are fuckwits of the year. Some gamers are incel beta cuck virgins that... Uh, <laughs> what was the other words that were banned? Let's get them all in. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, well, um, yeah, what was the other one? Yeah, okay. yeah. Whatever it was, let's, let's add that to your adjectives. And simps. And um, virgins. Oh, and simps? Yeah. Nah. And I still maintain that we should implement that rule we talked about a long time ago. There should be a mandatory rule, like an alcoholic who has to blow into a special tube to make his car start, you should have to blow a load before you're allowed to send an angry tweet. I think lots of people <laughs> blow a load. You should. <laughs> before you absolutely should. That. Right, yeah. I said it in an episode ages ago and I stand by it now, is that the amount of hate online is pent up frustration at something else. And then, you know, this is for some reason your outlet. You're taking it off on some poor developer who has been crunched to Jesus by some corporate shit knuckle who has no idea about what it takes to make a video game uh, that people love, you know, and just like make more microtransactions, make that happen. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, uh, yeah. I think every life decision should be accompanied by a, like, with post-nut clarity, for sure. That Maybe not just... all of them. I mean, there's a few things no. that probably can't I think both. I think most should yeah. have that. Most big life decisions <laughs> you, you should have post-nut clarity at all. You, you don't want to be choosing a funeral home uh, and then be like, oh, God, I must have not first. Oh, God. I can choose a funeral home. Should I, I go for the wooden coffin or the metal? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. God. <laughs> yeah. God, but, man. Yeah. That's it. Hey, uh, can I lay in this and masturbate in for five minutes? It's integral <laughs> to my purchasing decision. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a hey, those things are expensive. Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Yeah. Those things are expensive and you're going to be spending a lot of time in there. Might as well. <laughs> yeah. Got to get got to get wood to pick the right wood. Is right. this try before yeah. you buy or what's the scenario? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, there, there certainly has been some massive fuckwits this year. I mean, there's definitely uh, a lot of elements in the studios. I mean, for me, it's probably more uh, corporate gamers and uh, sorry, corporate uh, gaming executives and corporate um, media heads that for me are probably like a collective fuckwits of the year because mm -hmm. we've seen them try and fuck and rush out content that if it had time, attention and love to the source material uh, of people who built it, you know, you get success stories like The Mandalorian. When you push companies to make something, especially with these smaller developers that get absorbed into places like EA, and you force them to produce something and get it out earlier than what they would consider their best work and then hang them out to dry and you ruin the careers and the reputations of these people who if you saw the full story behind the scenes you would understand that you know what happened that's not the way it works people just know oh who made this who was the show who was the lead runner on this blah 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 and they torch them so mm -hmm. the rise of all of that i've really been hating but i guess the light at the end of the tunnel of that is that we've seen more and more like we talked about earlier the people that love it getting you know proving these people wrong over and over again now we've got three or four examples over the last 12 months yeah that, i'd say stadia um, guy still, take, still takes the cake for me <laughs> as an individual yeah that's it is a super douchey thing but tell me that's not the mouthpiece for what all those companies are thinking i mean mm -hmm. you know uh yeah. all the corporate music places that are saying oh that dickhead accidentally let four seconds of acdc's back in black slip through because he had it as his ringtone sue the prick you know fuck off you know he yeah. didn't mean to do copyright material and to send him a dcma takedown because of something that wasn't intentional or was in a video game or an ad popped up at the wrong time i mean please all this sort of stuff drives me crazy and it's just greed because they got hit in a year where they spend their money on nonsense all the time that when uh you know the rubber hit the road they had nothing left so now they're trying to take from people who are trying to create something from nothing which is what mm -hmm. they've made profits off this entire time. So the success of the gaming industry means more people are coming to take a piece of, of what those people have had. The Twitch streamers, the YouTubers, mm -hmm. the developers, you name it. So 
Yeah, I think uh, corporate culture is my fuckwit of the year for sure. Fair enough. Mm. Uh, so Stadia for you boys, huh? I, I stick with yeah. Stadia guy. Stadia guy was... I'll it, back off. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, um, I'll say I'll back off the gamers for now. But you're right. It's it's not the entirety oh, of the game. Games. It's that oh, subsect of gamers. Fuckwit, for it's sure. that subsect yes. of gamers. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. I think I Absolutely. do think like I I agree that like that subsect of gamers like the instant go to move of death threats is one of the weirdest most disturbing yeah. things I've ever seen in my life. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and I, I know you didn't mean all gamers whenever you said that, but like yeah, that that subsect of gamers like those those fucking weirdos, um, that's fucking crazy to me. I've never seen something escalate. Let's so be real that that same pocket of humans is creating problems for us everywhere though. They're the same oh, ones. Yeah, I agree. like I, agree. <laughs> I don't believe in science. I believe in my feelings. My feelings are much better than the sciences because I stuck my dick in the exhaust pipe of my car and it didn't break. <laughs> So therefore, <laughs> uh, my dick is rock a few, you know? It's just yeah. like, oh, the logic is not there. It's yeah, so dumb. Yeah, yeah. it is crazy, 100%. Yeah. But yeah. I don't like it. Fuck Stadia guy. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Fuck <laughs> Stadia guy. <laughs> yeah. Can we make that our first t-shirt? Fuck Stadia guy. God, I hope so. <laughs> we're going to actually make some of these t-shirts. We, we're always like, let's we, make We have t-shirt. a list. We never, we yeah, never do. Running list. We never do. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, now McFly asked us to do some top 10 lists. To be honest, like when gaming news slows down, there is going to be episodes of this pod like that and probably some YouTube content as well. So uh, we'll just do, I guess, some of our favorite things in these categories over the last year instead, um, just to keep the show running. So uh, what are some of your top games for the year, boys? We Uh, sort of talked about it a bit last week. Problem is remembering all the games or the the movies and stuff. Hades? I still um, need to play that, dude. Yeah. Hades, Hades, Hades. Legends of Runeterra and Genshin um, take the cake for me, for sure, for games. Genshin's definitely up there. Um, but yeah, um, trying to think what else did I play earlier this year that I just dove into. Definitely mm-hmm. like not Cyberpunk. No. Well, you well, you got to say Valhalla because you and I put in a lot yes. of hours to Valhalla. You don't play a game for a hundred hours if you don't love it. Yeah, that's true. Valhalla also is up there on the list. Yeah, Watch Dogs is pretty so. good. I wouldn't say it's like one of my. Uh, it might be top ten just because of the lack of like big releases that actually came this year. Like it might scrape yeah. into ten by default. Yeah, um, absolutely. <clears throat> I can't remember if Outer Worlds was early this year or late last year, but if it was this year, it's going to be one of my favorite games. Um, Gears Tactics was a wonderful little game. I would play that again. XCOM, the X Pack for that wasn't as good. I think Gears Tactics was significantly better all round for gameplay. And uh, Wasteland Three is one that I still haven't finished, but I absolutely will because uh, it's Fallout Two reimagined. I mean, why wouldn't you love it? Um, mm-hmm. Valhalla. Look, I'm still going to say Cyberpunk. I mean, only because i am lucky enough to be trying to play it i guess as they kind of intended and i can see what they're doing with it and i really want to see where the story finishes before i make a final call i'm not saying any of you should go out and buy it right now you could definitely wait on this one but i do think we're going to be talking about that game very differently in a year's time what do you guys think about the single player portion of avengers i know we're talking about the entire game but we all had great things to say about the story i'm too scarred now I did like it. I did, <laughs> I did like it at the time, but now I. Mate, I just the way can't you talk about this company is like it was an uncle that molested you when you were seven. Do you know what I mean? You it, have that level of like PTSD about this. Yeah, I fucking I hate it, and I can't separate the emotions anymore. So it's. That's like, where I understand you had such a comfortable life. If that's your <laughs> like <laughs> biggest. No, I, I have I have shades of gray. I'm not just always black and white. I but know. For, for things like this, like now. I, I, I know, but it's comedic gold for me to pick out this perception <laughs> of you that I know is not real, but I can cherry pick things that you say and yes. make them sound way worse. It's part of it what makes great. me have fun on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just like to me, you're all like, uh, sorry, to you guys, I'm all just like shrimps and barbecues, I'm sure. Yeah. That, that's all you eat. Right? Bombs, a few extra sea bombs thrown in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Half Life Alex for still, for me, is the game of the year. Uh, very good. Oh, Star Wars Squadrons, I must say for just nerd engagement god damn it Uh, because i've always loved uh x-wing versus tie fighter i've always loved flight combat games and there's so few of them that are even close to decent and this game which is great i I really need to fire that up in the next couple weeks man give that some time yeah uh fallen order was last year right it was was, yeah or should i think it was i mean this year is the longest year in documented history i'm pretty sure it was like a 750 day year at this point <laughs> exactly exactly yeah i'm pretty yeah. sure that was 2019 
Uh, yeah, I think it was. Th- yeah. 36 hour days for 762 days, you know. Yeah. So no uh yeah, good year for video games. Let's let's be real. Like even yeah. a lot of the like mid-tier games what I'm mentioning now were still certainly very very good, but just uh, obviously not enough to go on this list. Mm-hmm. Uh what else did I play? Let me go quickly in the A&R Discord where I post some of those mini reviews. Let me see what else I played. Watch Dogs Legion. Oh, Last of Us 2. How the fuck did we not talk about that? Oh shit. Mm. <laughs> uh. Oh, we we boy. think we're smart and do podcasts about video games that we know lots about, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima. Oh shit! Oh yeah, yeah, that was this year. To be up 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Control was last year, but I only played it this year. Um, Pico would be upset if I didn't mention Tony Hawk. He'd be upset if he didn't say balloons either. So I mean, <laughs> in saying uh, that, a lot of people in the Patreon chat, he's convinced to download that game, and they're all loving it, talking about monkey strategy. And I'm like, oh fuck! You know? Hey, he had me until it was a five dollar entry. Like, oh, that's how they get you. You got to yeah, pay no, this exactly. much to get inside the monkey. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a trap every time. <sighs> uh, top ten TV shows. Oh, there's, there's a good, good couple for me here. Um, Dave, for sure. I still need to uh, watch that, dude. You want to oh, put me on to Little Dicky? Trust me, dude. It is actually oh. a brilliant show. Like, I'm blown okay. away. Uh, please, mm. anyone listening to this, please watch that show. Please. You will not regret it. I okay. can guarantee it. Um, but yeah, so Dave, probably my number one. Then Queen's Gambit, because um, I really, really enjoyed Queen's Gambit. I thought that was a movie. That shows how much I haven't seen that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a show, and it's actually really mm-hmm. fucking good. It's a it's a limited series, though, so it's only eight episodes, and there's not going to be oh, like a okay. sequel or anything. Maybe that's my misunderstanding. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Dave, uh, that... Oh, uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, that one was really fucking good. I would say that's probably two, actually. So, Dave, What We Do in the Shadows. And then, uh, uh, yeah, the other one that I already forgot the name of now. Um Mm-hmm. And then the great probably as well. Okay, what do you guys say? The Mandalorian. Uh, yeah, I mean, are you you're forgetting the Mandalorian? Does that not count? Oh yeah, oh, Mando season two. Are we gonna, are we gonna yeah. talk about the boys at all? <laughs> oh yes, shit! The, call, yeah, yeah, exactly. The boys. The boys. Well. For fuck's sake, <laughs> that's my number one show of the year. God damn it, I love that show. Yeah, that I was, suppose. I, I suppose I was thinking like new show, but um, yeah, if we're including like sequels, like in, in seasons. Um, mm-hmm. then yeah for sure like those two absolutely deserve to be on there yeah I mean I didn't catch a whole lot of new shows this season or this year yeah all uh, the ones I mentioned were are new shows but yeah those ones are definitely right. like way up there as far I think Dave still tops everything um, but yeah okay. like th- those are probably up there top three so I really discovered that Star Trek Discovery series this year um, yeah, when right. season three came out I think and um, I have never really been a Star Trek guy. Like, I respect the universe. I've watched the movies. I love the idea of it. But just so much of it is just like, you know, it's very much a show that's like, let's try and talk ourselves peacefully out of this situation so we can establish trade. Well, I'm like, let's blow some shit up in an X-Wing, <laughs> right? So it's never really been my show. But Discovery, man, I've been hooked on that. Um, it's been really good. I haven't seen the newer season or all latest episodes uh, from not that long ago. So I really need to go back and do that. But this year, I'm kind of like Hooch. I haven't watched that many new shows. I don't know whether it's because when you get to periods of high stress, you go... I mean, I, I've certainly always done this. Going back to comfort. Like, so I go back and watch a lot of shows that I just love. Like, my wife and I watched Scrubs earlier in the year, yet again. House, mm-hmm. yet again. You know what I mean? Like... It's going back and seeing that, and then going back and trying, you know, things that I missed, like like Buffy. So yeah. I can't think of what else well, this year was like else, a new IP for me, anyway. The other thing we're contending with is because of the pandemic, there were a lot of shows that did not start up in fall. Like you would have had mid season shows, and then you would have had That's shows true. that started in fall that we would have caught. And because they weren't doing any filming over the summer, or um, you know, in the spring or whatever, there was nothing to bring to the table. Like, for example, mm. like all the CW shows that I normally watch would be on right now. Well, they would have you had know, their course. crossover event. Basically, now would be wrapping yeah. up. Yeah. Exactly. I was exactly. only talking about that with my wife the other day, saying that normally around now we'd be talking about it. Although I still haven't seen the Infinite Earths crossover, to be honest. Like, that, that's 
we were catching oh, yeah. up to prep for that and we we caught up on supergirl which was painful at that season we caught up <laughs> on uh actually we didn't finish batwoman because yeah i was like i can't it's just there's something about this show that just sucks uh the villain was good um but when we get to legends of tomorrow and i was like let's take a break man um <laughs> yeah i don't know i love that show and i hate that show depending on the episode yeah, the, it's it's so goofy though you just have to turn your brain off completely. which is normally my thing but it's like you talk if people talk about like cheesy in our conversation before like that show is super cheesy yeah yeah, yeah it is it is yeah like i tell you a, a big giant fur uh toy or stuffed toy taking on a dragon or demon oh i've seen that episode with bebo yeah that's, but then again that, yeah. that was that season like we're past yeah. that now now it's kind of like <laughs> all right let's take the worst characters that are failing in the other franchises and bring them here um yeah. actually news was out this week earlier mate that it sounds like diggle as green lantern is going to happen in the arrowverse i meant to mention that yes mm. um, i've heard it so many times now it's just like just do it but yeah. that's one of the things that you missed during the crossover event like at the end of it Oh, I heard um, stories, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think for like for me though, watching it and there was the speculation early on, they're like, Wow, Diggle would make a great Green Lantern, but then once they had the episode on Arrow where his stepfather shows up mm-hmm. and his stepfather's last name is Stuart. Yeah. Like, okay. It's it's a half it's a thing. They're doing it. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna do it. Yeah, well. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think, what about uh, movies, guys? I was going to say, I do know my new mission now is to make you guys watch Dave. Like, I'm going to be bothering you every single day. It's not tough. It's only because I just didn't loop back around to it. It's certainly on my list, um, but Buffy was my side project one at the moment. Like, um, it needs uh, to be. Dave's going to be a side project one for me. It's not going to be a um, watch it in one binge type thing. Like, when you start it, you're not going to be able to stop it. I can pretty much guarantee you. Um, Well, I mean, with my experience with Little Dickies, that's normally the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will be. Uh, yeah, so I'll, 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 I'm going to be sending daily Dickie. reminders to both <laughs> you guys now um, for that. So, you're oh, really? You're going to send us reminders to watch something, are you? Daily, oh, dude. I yeah. wasn't even going to go there, mate. Daily. <laughs> two texts from Firefly. us with the list of two texts from us with a list of shit we want you to watch and catch up on would be enough memory to crash your fucking phone. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> But mine's, you mine's listen easier to this to... podcast alone, let alone the <laughs> offline stuff we said, dude, you need to see this. Mine's easier, to, like Dave is easier to devour quickly because it's like, I think it's 10, mm-hmm. 30 minute episodes, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So it's super quick. Um, yeah, here's the, here's the like, really challenging one. I can uh-huh. not think of a movie that I saw this year that came out this year that I go, this is awesome yeah um we i can't about this, think, I think of one i think we were talking about this the other day like the movies that came out earlier in the year yeah well birds of prey um, was the big one that i missed and i still need to go back and watch yes. that uh i've heard very mixed bags of about it no i haven't Ooh. it was yeah, I, it was I, very 100 aggressively it. mediocre is how i would describe that but you have no love for the source material because you're anti-batman i that is true and yes <laughs> i really can't think of a movie how bad is that um i like the bill and ted sequel i still haven't seen that i know hebrew hated it yeah oh I, it's not that i hated it i just i wasn't a fan of it it wasn't like i understand for me yeah or yeah maybe i actually cannot like, name i'm going through a list of all the movies that came out this year i cannot see one that i would look at like even borat the sequel it was like it was okay no 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 love for um do little or uh <laughs> <laughs> Again, skip so straight Sonic over the that bad boy. Man, how did I miss this movie coming out? This is a movie that I definitely cannot watch. Um, Robin's Wish. Apparently, it's an emotional look at the end of a life of uh, Robin Williams. I don't want to oh, see no. that. No, God, yeah. no, no. Let me remember him. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I skipped half the movies on this list, bro. Yeah, an American Pickle well, was really good. I, I really enjoyed that one actually. Um, it sounds like an episode of Rick and Morty. Uh, no, it's, it's <laughs> Seth Rogen uh, starring. As, oh, I remember you telling yeah, me about this on HBO yeah. Max. Really, really good, actually. I mean, really it doesn't sound good. as awesome as Stoned Alone, which is my most anticipated movie of 2021 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. That's not yeah. Marvel, um, bro. What's another? Oh, um, actually, did this come out in 2020? The new My Hero movie. 
What? Hmm? Have you? Um, do any of you guys watch My Hero Academia or no? Yes. No. Okay. Love that show. Um. So the second movie. I forgot what the name is now. This is an incredible, powerful uh, podcast listening, by the way. Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> if you I can't mean, think of one, let's move on, I say. Yeah. If you, if you, I mean, if you go back and look at it, there weren't a lot of movies that came out this year. Everything got pushed to next That's year. That's kind of the beyond. point. Yeah. And if that doesn't tell you that streaming is the fucking future, I don't know what does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, like, so My Hero, uh, My Hero Academia, Heroes Rising, technically released 2019 in Japan. Released well, here. Happen released here 2020 in america so mm. on the fence there but that one was amazing so there's that gotcha also. all right jackie 246 asked the question this one's for you hebrew uh mm-hmm. going through some tom cruise movies i'm not going to do all of them like he's asked but i'm going to mm-hmm. run rapid fire seen it yes or no okay okay any of the mission impossibles the newest one just the last one just the last one with um what's his face henry cavill oh fallout yeah that's right yeah, yeah uh yeah. top gun no but i know it well uh, edge of tomorrow at this point <laughs> okay Ed- edge of tomorrow <laughs> yes that was the like the time loop one with emily blunt yeah, yeah yeah i saw it i don't remember anything about it but i saw uh it. jack reacher i did see that one um yeah that one was uh okay i think it also had a sequel didn't it I think it I, did, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw both of them, actually, yeah. Yep. Risky Business. Nope. Jerry Maguire. Nope. Eyes Wide Shut. Nope. <laughs> Rain Man. Uh, Parts, I think. I think I saw okay. it and fell asleep or something. Right. Uh, The Mummy? Uh, Yes. <laughs> Not good. Falls asleep during Rain Man, but watch The Mummy. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> no, uh, I didn't say it was good. <laughs> okay. Uh, A Few Good Men. No. Come on. Collateral? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Minority Report? <laughs> You're killing no, me. No, but here. I know it. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, Oblivion? No, I don't think so. Vanilla Sky? No. <laughs> War, so. War of the Worlds? Uh, I saw like a very small part of it, and then I was like, okay, I'm done. Last Turned Samurai? Yes, very good movie. Ameri- very good okay. movie. American Made? No. I know you've seen Night and Day. I know you've seen I have Tropic seen Night Thunder. And Day. <laughs> uh, fucking hell. I still can't believe you've seen that, but not these. Uh, <laughs> Tropic Thunder, I know you've seen. Interview yeah. with the Vampire? No. The Firm? No. Days of Thunder? No. <laughs> Valkyrie? Uh, that sounds familiar. Is that another futuristic one? No, that That's was the, the Hitler one. one. No. Hitler one. Hitler. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I did see that one. Yeah. Uh, Magnolia. No. Rock of Ages. Yes, I didn't like it. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, the Outsiders. No. Maybe in it school. Also has Ralph Macchio in it, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure Ralph Macchio is in there too. I haven't seen that in a very long yeah. time. Yeah, uh, I, I think he is. I think yeah. I, I might have seen it in school. Um. I'm right. not sure because that uh, was a required born on book. the born on the fourth of July. Nope. Color of money. Nope. Far and away. Nope. God, he's made so many cocktails. Fucking movies. Nope. Cocktail. Nope. Uh, all the right moves. Nope. Legend. <laughs> Sounds familiar. What happened? There's no way he saw Legend. No, that's true. Yeah, There's yeah, yeah. no way. The rest of them are pretty deep in the weeds. So okay. uh, let's just end it there. We'll be here all effing wait, day. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Legend. Is, what? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Legend as in the one with um, Tom Hardy? What? No. Okay. Tim it, Curry? Oh, well, there is, a, there, is a movie, <laughs> there is a movie called uh, like Legend. I believe it's just Legend. Yeah. That's Tom yeah, Hardy. It was fairly correct. recent. Yeah. That, that was a very good movie. Yeah, it was fairly Legend recent, about two Tom years Hardy. ago. Mm-hmm. Is this one where he's two, playing twins in yeah. the Mafia or something? Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing that advertising. I didn't it know what it was called. really fucking good. Okay. Mm, also, nothing to do with Tom Cruise, though. So. Nothing to do with Tom Cruise, I guess. Nothing and to do with And you mentioned Jerry Maguire, right? I thought you did. I did early, yeah. He said yeah. no. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen a handful, it sounds like. Huh. All right, so Tick asks, if you could live in a video game world uh, thinking of Ready Player One, which would it be and why? 
Hmm. Well, Ready Player One was like a hub, right? So, well, no, the world where I guess that world exists, where you can spend most of your time, because technically the world of Ready Player One is still a world, and then it has a world within a world. So, yeah. okay, um, there's levels. So, spending time in a specific like, game within that world, mm-hmm. um, within the yeah. game world. Um, I think a lot of psychopaths will say GTA Five. God, I would not <laughs> no, want thank to you. live there, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> um, uh, that's the thing, though, because you think about the reality of living in a lot of these games. Like, I mean, the Fallout series is immediately out uh-huh. because yeah. it's it, that place is fucked. Um, and I guess part of it is, do you have powers in this world? Because, like, I'm assuming you are the one that has powers whenever you go in. Because well, if you're not, let's, you're, let's you assume just... that you are playing as whatever your character is in those okay. games. Yeah. Um, I mean, Infamous would be super fun. <laughs> I was really thinking the same thing earlier, man. That like yeah. that is such, a, especially because of the power draw. The powers from the first game, exactly, where you just like yeah. suck electricity out, and then then fly around and shit. What's more like yeah. drifting, I guess. Yeah, um, that's definitely one that's pretty cool because it's basically our world, but you have superpowers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that that's one. I I do want to say Bioshock, but at the same time, that could be fucking oh, scary Jesus, as hell. No. <laughs> pre pre fall of Rapture. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that would be something. Uh, da, 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 da. See, most of these games have. A I mean, if I could, presence. if I could live and in like Pokemon the reality world. of it, like a lot of the stuff that happens in that game of like when you're not doing the gaming stuff, like you know, just getting a basic cut from a piece of wood you're probably going to die from some form of infection because medicine doesn't exist yeah that's true um yeah uh, or radiation or po- any uh, like things. living in a pokemon world would be fucking sick as hell so <laughs> that, totally actually that's there. probably the winner yeah. yeah that's like the safest i feel like it's most wholesome but also yeah. badass yeah it's definitely not mortal kombat um, oh, no, that is the last place I would go. <laughs> <laughs> I would easily take Bioshock over going to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think the last one I would go to be like probably Resident Evil or something like that, or um, oh. Dead Space. Oh, I would no. take I would take that over fucking Rambo coming after me in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, here's the, here's the hilarious thing. I spent a lot of time talking about how much I like the world of Cyberpunk, but I sure as hell wouldn't want to live there. Oh yeah, fuck that. There is some cool things, but it's pretty fucked. Yeah, something can just hack into your brain and overheat it. No thanks. But it's like just it's dirty, it's smelly. It's like you look at that and you're just like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. I would definitely not want to live there. That's for sure. No. Exactly. It's funny how like there's not as much emphasis put on like. Um, actually, it might change towards the end of the game. I don't know, but like the whole like world war that actually happened that led to these mega cities, hooch. Mm-hmm. Like how it does seem like there's a lot of the world that is just uninhabitable. Mm-hmm. yeah right because of the ai wars yeah that, that whole storyline is pretty cool i haven't really gotten too far through it but yeah i would totally Fine. live in the world of fable for sure i was wondering if you're gonna oh, say that. i don't know about that that would be so much sword fun, fights dude. do you know the reality of a sword fight do like, you lose that sword fight oh that's Ugh. a bad way to go yeah well, but that's... i'm i'm the hero in that scenario so i won't be losing that sword fight oh you'll never lose <laughs> or i'll well, get to replay it over and over again you, yeah until, just, until that's it you I guess it's the great thing about all these worlds. It doesn't really matter because you just get to go back to a previous save if anything bad happens. Yeah. Unless yeah. we take that rule some away. Lun- some lunatics select hardcore mode. Yeah. <laughs> like, unless we That's take what that we, rule apparently, away. That apparently, we all made that choice already. We all set our difficulty to hardcore mode. We're going to get one life. Uh, it's up to you whether you fuck it up. Yep. <laughs> Assassin's Creed would be pretty cool just because I would want to live, like, whatever time period I'd want. Oh, God. Um, no, thanks. No. I would, I would fucking pick that. Yeah. Could you imagine just how stinky it is? Yeah. Like, in... Ugh. No, thank you. Oh, dude. I, I, I would take it. Like, Old England? I'd fucking oh. live that place. Oh, Old England sure. is the worst. Oh, my God. If you have powers, I will admit, like, there is some coolness about, like, uh, God of War. But, again... For the yeah. average person in that world, you have to be so assured that you are going to be a god whenever you walk in. There. <laughs> <laughs> I am the god of war. Yeah, I can't really think of too many worlds that you'd look at and just go, "Yeah, man, I would love to be in that reality." Like, because if you do have that with all the powers and all the cool stuff that comes with it, yeah. Or if you're the king or the emperor or whatever. But so many of them. Um, I mean, maybe Knights of the Republic to be around in that time would be oh, pretty cool. Any of the Star Wars ones would be cool. Yeah, actually, yeah, because there is a lot except, of cool shit except for Fallen there. Order. I wouldn't want to be around during the Fallen Order times. Uh, I would even be okay he being didn't around during the, the cool Fallen planets. Order times, as long as I was a Jedi. I'd be okay with that. Any anything that puts mm. me as a Jedi, yeah, I'll, I'm down to go to whatever world. What oh, if you end up during... as a stormtrooper? 
Well, that's not what I want. <laughs> what, if, uh, what if you end up uh, surrounded by stormtroopers and Order 66 is executed? Uh, then I'll kill them all because I'm a way better Jedi oh, than all. Okay. Duh. Mm, gotcha. Duskies. But no, I um, I would definitely say, like, if you're playing the game, like, it gets a much more dangerous game if you are, like, there's no guarantee that you're going to be the person that's that has powers or whatever. But, like, you have an increased chance on if, like, the population in general has a, a decent bit of people with powers, then you have a bigger chance, obviously. But if you're not guaranteed powers going into a world, that makes it a much mm-hmm. more dangerous situation. That's whenever Pokemon comes into play. The funny thing is, you're kind of talking about the original version of Star Wars Galaxies, where everyone starts that game, and it's mm-hmm. kind of open-world sandboxy, but only a handful of people were born with like a midichlorian count that could enable them to become a Jedi. That's so at the start, cool. it was completely out of your control whether your character was Force-sensitive or not. And then they changed it kind of game. everyone could be a Jedi. I'd be restarting yeah. that game over and yeah. over and over. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was it was multiplayer online game. Like that wasn't a choice. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like right. it was your account was selected or it wasn't. Like there was very very few Jedi or otherwise. Well, I'd quit uh, in the start of that game. game. <laughs> well, there was a lot of people that would have been like, "I've got a Jedi. I want to play." You know? Yeah, I might be one of those people. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, All right. Was, that's why I didn't yeah. play. Yeah, Slim asked the last question. Uh, what's one nerd thing you're most excited to pass on to the next generation? Now, I will say this, that we're working in the background on a bonus episode at the moment between myself, Hooch, and Piker. Um, mm-hmm. Hebrew, I'm not necessarily saying we're excluding you, but unless I'm your okay girlfriend with being is excluded like from this somehow thing. become pregnant, we're going to make this kind of a dads and gaming thing or nerds yeah, and yeah. gaming dad episode, if you will. Um, we're just trying to work out a timeline on that when Pike is, you know, not laid up with um, blistering anal warts. So mm-hmm. we're getting on that soon. But uh, yeah, what do you what do you think? What's one nerd thing you're most excited to pass on to the next generation? Comics, video games, books, toys, statues. Um, oh God, I, I, it's hard to pick just like one thing because there's so many things. Like I'd want to pass on all of the nerd culture. Um, but uh, I, if I had to pick like one, I would say like I feel like the the best one is probably video games in general just because it's so broad as far as like Mm. great storytelling you know like uh, more um uh, immersion and stuff like that to be able to to hand them like the the realms of actually feeling like they are a part of a different world um so i feel like it's the best of of all of those um so yeah that would be mine i feel like it's the most obvious though so it might be the coolest answer what do you got hooch I've learned uh, quickly that timing is key to when you want to pass these things down. Uh, I made the mistake of letting my kids watch Space Jam. The, and I have paid for it by having to watch Space Jam. What? I think my son tried to watch it three times yesterday. Wow. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think for me, it would be more like comics and the superhero idea and things like that because so many other things can springboard from that mm-hmm. the, the the love of that type of storytelling and that that like narrative that feeling of you know i can identification with superpower beings and stuff like that will then translate well when it comes to watching movies or playing games or things like that so for me it's it's definitely i want to i want to share my love of of superheroes with with my kids i've kind of done that a little bit and they've they've joined me on some some rides and others they've uh, been like no I can't I can't hang with you on this one dad <laughs> so, <laughs> oh for sure yeah. and stuff that we remember being way cool than it actually is is part of it yeah. like no you yeah. need to watch this and we haven't seen it for twenty years then you watch it and go oh this is terrible yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say like I would just like there's an issue that I have with, with the comic book world I guess and the fact that um, everything is so inconsistent and power creep is such a thing that it becomes more confusing than anything else for me uh that's why i like defined reality is like what we have with the the mcu granted they're still overpowered people obviously but at least like there's not a version of every single person basically having every single power at some point or another so well that's why it's great how you can you can just kind of pick windows of time like Mm -hmm. for example um the, the 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 best batman for me is the frank miller batman Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right that's it, it and i imagine it is for a lot of people because he was so well written uh, in those books you know the the long halloween dark knight returns like Grand Returns part two so all of those uh graphic novels were great 
on how he identified with the, or how he created the character of Batman and, and, and Bruce Wayne. That doesn't mean that I ignore other incarnations of Batman. It's just that that particular one is for me the one that I go, yes, this this is my perfect vision of what Batman should and should act like it should be like right mm -hmm. yeah that's fair i just can't live in that world <laughs> where they're, they're <laughs> I, I can't take multiple versions of a character i need consistency yeah uh i'd say for me it's going to be an evolving thing i think at the start it's definitely gonna be books because uh, even though my daughter's only 18 months uh, she loves reading stories like she'll mm -hmm. the first thing she does when she gets out of bed is she'll run uh, find books that are upstairs and then like bring them back into our room and uh, stand in front of me slapping me with the book until I read it so <laughs> um, like seeing those little things like you know reading the story and, and you know obviously some of the characters I give voices to because uh, I'm trying to entertain her and mm -hmm. like you know seeing her eyes light up uh, when she knows like a voice is about to come because uh, obviously she's picking up on the the stories and the characters that I obviously like and enjoy because we got some Marvel ones and you know some a little right. bit of everything like you know sometimes it's Unicorn sometimes it's you know Spider Man going through the story and can you find the rhinos you know uh, that kind of <laughs> thing so um but I think I think reading is if she continues that that'll be where it starts for sure but then as she gets older if she's into video games I think if anything uh, for me it's if we find anything at all that we connect with that'll be the thing like I think sh she'll kind of define that or you know if we have other kids they'll define it because you know her learned anything from my years as a you know preteen and a teenager is like how important those years are for defining what your adult relationship can potentially be with your parents because you know the difference between Christmas Day you're both unwrapping video games for the same console and you bought each other the same game because then you're going to play it together and have a few laughs. It's very different from, you know, getting to Christmas lunch and having nothing in common to talk about, uh, which is what I absolutely don't want with my kids that I have with my parents, you know? So, yeah, yeah I think that there's so much that I would love her to like, but I want to be very careful about how I do that. You know, I mean, right. it will certainly be you know, once humans can interact with each other, I think little kids love dressing up. And obviously as a nerd who loves cosplay, like once I get this body into some semblance of shape, you know, maybe 2021. Circles of shape. Yeah. I was yeah. Gonna say, well, so it's, a, well, it's more potato. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think that that might be probably the first thing we really bond over is that like, she's already like identifying little outfits that she likes to wear and stuff like that. So I can imagine that, you know, once she's seen a couple of cartoons or Disney princesses or Marvel characters, whatever it is she identifies with, because I want to dress up as that. And, you know, when we can go to a con again, because they're a great place for taking little kids sometimes as well, just because you see, mm. you get a feel because everything's there, what they can kind of fall in love with. And those experiences, you know, that's probably the, the I guess, yeah, probably maybe going to a con is probably the thing I'm looking forward to the most. That'd be super cool. Now. Okay. Yeah. And then um, evolving it from there, like seeing what seeing what she's into. Yeah, yeah, hmm. I agree. Yeah, I, man. I think That's that there's going to be less of a generational gap between, like, you know, like me and luckily my dad's I do. cool, but yeah, you know, like with you and your dad <laughs> versus you know you and your kids. I think there's going to be far less of a gap there. I think so. I mean, especially like the attention we pay to things, and in, in a lot of ways too. Like, I think I'm going to be more aware of, like, what my kid's going through or, like, the potential traps as well. Like, I remember my parents had no idea that at 16 I was having, like, you know, texted cyber sex with people miles away that for all I knew could have been, like, a 38-year-old dude. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's just like, well, the pictures that she sent were of boobs. Must be a girl, you know? <laughs> um, just like an awareness of like nerd technology and, and what you can do that's great with it and what you sort of go hey I never want you to do this um, without letting me know first you know um, yeah. all those sort of things I think as you say and speaking the language as well like it's so easy now to fall out of nerd lingo like I think that thanks to things like Reddit you can kind of go what the fuck is this meme about what's a pog I don't get it you know it's, it's just a quick oh okay that's what that's what this whole thing is. So what, yeah, what, what is this tick tock thing you're talking about? Tick tock, <laughs> yeah, like a, like a clock. <laughs> yeah, go back to your Facebook, boomer. <laughs> What's a boomer? Yeah, so much of it is crazy, man. But yeah, it's I, I'm excited to do all that sort of stuff uh, as she gets older, man. But as I said, following their passion, I think is is 
the main thing through my attempt at dadhood i want to do differently to my folks because i've seen the difference you can tell like even even now like if i'm finishing up an email or something like i can feel the anxiety coming off her that she's not you know getting attention that for some reason my phone's more important than her in that moment and i'm just trying to be like hyper aware of those moments man because you can see how important it is to them that you give a shit about what they give a shit about in that moment and she's one i mean hooch you played this game for multiple decades now right Oh yeah. Well, I mean, not so much for the first two because I, you know, the circumstances didn't allow for it. But definitely yeah. now, we'll go um, into that a lot more that. in the dad pod if you want to. I mean, because we're going to sure. have three very different sort of like time periods of uh, you know dadhood. Father, like you're you're in yeah. one aspect. Uh, we got Piker who he's had round one. He's now in in round two, and mine is obviously in between the age of his kids. So I'm. I'm brand new and then obviously you know America versus Australia or even you know those two countries versus Dubai and uh and yeah I think I think how nerdity has really changed kids too now is probably going to come up like even non-nerd parents man just go oh kids being a pain in the ass throw them the iPad you know yes absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah I agree so yeah, I'm looking forward to that episode actually be really good cool yeah anything else you boys want to talk about before we sign off for our last episode of the year Oh, uh, yeah no i'm good oh, so okay. normally when we do these wrap-ups it's me going off for ages so i think to change it up a little bit i'm don't get me wrong i'm still gonna do it at the very end uh, after you guys are done talking <laughs> um hebrew is there anything you want to say to the people that have uh, been listening and uh getting us to an episode 17 and not only that but with feeling good about wanting to keep doing this for 2021 yeah, I, I would just—I guess the, you know—the biggest thing is the big thank you to our patrons, of course. Uh, your guys' support means literally everything for this. Um, we would not be here without it. Uh, but yeah, also you know, just the listeners at large, um, thank all of you guys for spending the uh, enormous amount of time <laughs> that it takes to uh, listen to these episodes. Sometimes, even if you're you know a casual listener and skip an episode or two, like whatever, like uh, any bit of it is always appreciated. Um, for the reviewers of the podcast, we really appreciate that. Uh, you know your continued support throughout the entire time that we've had ANR has been honestly like amazing Um, you know I know we've been through several pods at this point but this is definitely like our favorite because it's our kind of catch-all podcast Mm. and I know that that's something that we really uh, wanted to do and um, yeah it's just uh, it's amazing to have you guys listening to us and I love interacting with you guys and all the nerd fights and arguments that we get into all the time is is uh e- even though we are we might be at odds uh like i still love every minute of it so it's always fun um and yeah just you know general like kind of having that community is, is super nice especially whenever you know times inevitably come that aren't so great and uh it's been a super fun ride and i'm, I'm glad that everyone's here that's pretty much it for me absolutely now hooch uh who was basically the uh loki scripted of the anr podcast and that we we planned <laughs> on uh when piker was sort of saying look he doesn't know what what he can do with the pod whether he'll be back or not um we were intended on basically like rotating guest hosts so we said look hooch we talk to all the time we know he'd be great let's get him on for one while we try and figure out what we're going to do here and uh now here we are eight weeks later of uh every week obviously it's been a pleasure having you on um go for it mate it's your time to yabber uh no problem uh first of all i want to say uh, uh you're welcome hebrew for helping keep this going uh now uh, also <laughs> being a part of it <laughs> no, you get it from both sides um, yeah i get i get well you know what i get it from both sides but to be honest it's just it's been amazing to see this i remember when uh, you stopped doing the Masters of Launch, and there was kind of this void where I'm like, God, I don't, I don't have a podcast that I can, you know, really go to reliably week in and week out. And you know, when the idea came up that you guys were going to start the, uh, you know, this, this particular format, I was super excited about it. And I couldn't wait to hear it. And from the first episode, it just was just a, it was great and then the community that we set up on discord and you know that we're that we're all talking to and and, and, and engaging in it's just been an amazing amazing you know fun time and I, I i've come to to you know see everybody as hey these are like extended friends we're all coming together yeah and you know talking about nerd stuff and you know just being a part of that was great but then when you guys extended the offer 
to sit in on you know one particular podcast when Pika uh, couldn't make it. That I mean, I, I there was no way I was going to miss that opportunity. Um, and then you know, said, so here we are, eight weeks later, and this has just been a new experience. I've I've dragged my my brother and my two daughters into it with me. I've got them listening and 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 hanging out and. You know, we talk about things and and that, that are both going on within the podcast and just in gaming and you know nerd culture. So that doing a, doing this has been able to translate into you know my life outside of this. And I can't thank you guys enough for giving me the opportunity to to be involved. It's just it's always fun, even when we have our six hour marathon sessions. It's just it's a blast. <laughs> the funny thing is, we always like even before the Patreon records. We always say shit like, ah, oh, man, I'm tired. I feel like shit. Uh, I got stuff going on with the kids or whatever it is. And we're always like, let's just make this one short. And then we start fucking talking. And the pre-show is always way longer than we intend to be as well. Forget They're, they're the cuts that a lot of you guys won't hear because it's for the Patreon episodes where we literally go, Ty, we're going to start now. And we just go. Like, it's completely unedited. They hear everything with no cuts if they want to they can still listen to the edited version later in the week um and all of a sudden it's like dudes we've been talking for an hour and a half we need to start the goddamn show because someone (laughs) will say something that you go whoa 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 wait what and then a nerd battle ensues so i mean that's been a lot of the fun and a lot we do um so look i know you guys are here for like gaming uh and nerdy stuff so you know you're not here to hear about people's feelings and stuff, but just a personal thank you to every single one of you that's listened to this, that's continued to listen, is um, thanks for your patience and letting us play because it was real tempting when we started this to just copy a lot of the formulas that are out there and just go, all right, we're going to do a section on, there'll be gaming nerdy news. It's going to run for 20 minutes. Uh, we'll talk about the headlines and your personal experiences on it. Then we'll move to like games and then we'll finish, right? And there's so many of those out there, like competition for gaming podcasts. Swear to God, every every nerd thinks they're the greatest video gamer of all time. It's what makes us all uh, whatever we are. And then we're sitting here, like we're talking about a topic and then someone says something remotely that in the back of your brain pokes into something that you really, really love or are very, very passionately against. And we just go with it. And we know that for some of you, like, you know, some of you are gamers, some of you are not. Uh, Some of you love MCU, some of you like Animal Crossing, some of you like Doom Hardcore Mode. Like, it's really hard to please everyone. But a lot of you, like, stand around and listen anyway. And we wanted to keep that feel. So a big thank you for going with us. Like, when we go on these tangents where... You think, oh, okay, they'll, they'll finish talking about Batman in a sec. Uh, they'll only be like two minutes. And then 30 minutes later, we're still bullshitting about whatever it was. Um, we really appreciate that you guys have sort of, I guess, latched onto that format and, and given us feedback that that's what you want to hear more of, which is the real reactions of three dudes. Uh, or if, you know, if we ever get ladies on the podcast, they're always welcome <laughs> to uh, shit that we're into. You know, because that's what this this is what this was supposed to be. It's like, yeah, the only thing that's short of this for like my real life is I'm not shit faced when I'm talking about these things. There right? It's normally <laughs> me and my mates. We've been gaming during the day, and it's kind of like after a big footy game. Like when I used to play footy as a teenager as well. Like you'd wrap up the game, you go out for beers afterwards, you'd break down. Oh fuck, you know I should have kicked that goal in the third quarter, and oh pff, you can't tackle for shit. You know, you're doing that with your mates, but like breaking down all the stuff you've seen, watched, played, or whatever over a couple of beers or bourbons or whatever you're into so the fact that we get to do this uh and have anyone listen to it is still a miracle to me even after doing podcasts for two years the fact that anyone tunes into anything i have to say still blows my mind uh because i listen to this every day and i get sick of it (laughs) and the fact we have patreon supporting it as well that you know they're they're slowly edging us closer to things that we've dreamed of doing for a very long time um, you know, like if, if there's any way that we can try and push this more to a professional level, please understand that we could and would. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, we've got school and work and work has been insane for some of us with the pandemic and then family members have had sicknesses or illnesses or injuries and we're still trying to work full time or, or study full time through all of that. 
Um, it's like every time we get someone supporting and we can dedicate a little bit more or buy a new microphone, buy a new editing software. For fuck's sake, if we can afford an editor, good God, believe you me, folks, this will be a much more professionally edited podcast because <laughs> I will hand that off in a fucking heartbeat if I can. Yeah. Um, we want it to be something bigger than it is, but it's very much amateur hour. I know you can hear that with what we do. We have a brief outline, but the rest of it is all just winged and talking bullshit um so yeah i just there's a lot of gratefulness this year from myself so i apologize for the wankiness of this little you know thank you speech but (laughs) i really mean it like 2020 has been a challenging year for me especially for so many reasons um but the main one being yeah we've really been isolated from everyone that i know and love on planet earth and the fact that every day i've woken up and felt like i've had friends around me not just for you know obviously you guys and piker who have obviously you know literally i speak to you guys daily Mm-hmm. but the a and community like there, there are people that i know if i had a shit day even though we don't speak to most of those people every day i'm sure i could go hey man have you got a second they'd say fuck yeah i do and same yeah. and vice versa in fact we've had some of them do it that's what we wanted when we started a and man and we, yeah. you know if we, we never get another subscriber or another review or anything like that you know that alone for me it's been worth it this year for sure yeah, real quick i I, th- I think as both a, a fan and as as you know part of uh you know helping you guys out here i think we all need to uh, definitely recognize and show appreciation to you too for the work and the effort that you put into this because this is getting dangerously close to a circle jack just so yeah you know. oh, oh no no it's going to <laughs> circle jerk right here um, yeah, i know loaded yeah. upon it's i'm it's, not good with compliments yeah well. <laughs> <laughs> well you're gonna take this one you're gonna take it and you're gonna like it <laughs> how um, many times are you gonna say that to me this year uh, quite a few it's 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 a labor of love i mean and you mm-hmm. i know you've mentioned before like how much you wanted to do this and how how much of a joy it is but there's also a lot of work and a lot of effort that goes into it and we mm-hmm. uh, you know me especially and i know everybody else truly appreciate it and we definitely want to let it you know let you know how much we appreciate the work and effort that you put in it's given all of us a place to kind of call a second home a virtual home uh, where we can get get together with like-minded people, shoot the shit, have nerd arguments, uh, and then all walk away, you know, loving the same things and having a great time together. Um, whether that's all of us playing together, playing Avengers together, and then shitting on it mercilessly. Um, <laughs> the, the, the amount of people that have engaged with Genshin and just, you know, taken off with, with that uh, mm-hmm. and just sharing our own stories it's just been great and you know yeah. I, we want to just make sure that you know you know how much we appreciate the work that that you've done and thank you for doing that uh genuine pleasure dude and uh, let me put an apology on the back of that too because you reminded me of something i felt really bad about a couple times this year you guys know how much i dive into video games right it's not a secret but mm-hmm. I will get into a game and fall in love with it and i will play it to within an inch of its life and then walk away because there's nothing else for me to do right Mm -hmm. if you have through my love and passion of things in this last year followed me and joined an alliance that i have started in one of these games only for me to fuck off six weeks later i'm very sorry (laughs) but (laughs) i'm also gonna i'm also gonna warn you it's not gonna change because This is what I do. And look, some games will capture me for years at a time. The last two years, it feels like I've hopped uh, around a lot, but it's because so many of these games don't have that multi-year hook for me that they once yeah, did. But the end game hook. Um, like MSF was the first one in a while. Um, actually, no, mobile games probably been the main ones, really. Uh, and you're like, even right now, I'm feeling really, really good about Disney Mirrorverse, loving the shit out of that. I'm supposed to talk about the top of the show, but didn't that um yeah I, I could be playing that for six months i could be playing it for you know maybe the next six hours and i'm done i don't know so uh that will happen folks uh so yeah be prepared that if you suddenly become an alliance leader uh with no warning congratulations and i'm sorry <laughs> remember that when we do the a and r diablo immortal right <laughs> diablo so i feel is gonna I be think- very different Okay, yeah, it's gonna be a different well, scenario. maybe not Immortal, but Diablo Four. I don't. Oh, know, I, st- yeah. I need to get hands on before I figure out how I feel. Immortal seems like it's gonna be this supported platform for a while. Diablo Four, I think, is gonna be the fine. You guys were dicks about the phones thing. Have your fucking Diablo game on PC, but this is the <laughs> last one. I, that's that's where I feel like this is going with that game. 
I think that uh, Diablo Immortal is going to be a hardcore play for me until Diablo 4 comes out, and then it will switch to Diablo 4 almost immediately. Now, is D4 PC only, or are they going to do like D3 where they're going to... I think there's no way that's not going to be consoles As a console, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 So are we looking at another cross-play? I mean, yeah. They better do cross-play. I hope they do this time. Yeah, Yeah. They should. Yeah. Yeah. I've always thought it was dumb how they have the separate seasons on the different platforms. I always thought that was stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no excuse I mean, there's, for it these days. N- well, I mean, it, you don't understand. Like, that's a Herculean effort to get Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, whatever, to all. Yeah, but this agree. is a Herculean game. Yeah. It, uh, well, don't, don't forget, do you had you had other Herculean games before <laughs> that didn't that that couldn't cross that threshold. So yeah, but mm-hmm. I mean, if Destiny did it, so can Diablo. Like, it it, it can happen. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. I think they built it. it into the new platforms. Like the ecosystems look like they're ready for that now. Whereas yeah. PS4 probably not yeah uh well actually no it's like definitely not whereas some of these new ones coming through i think we're probably golden this is the yeah. time and we're seeing a lot of games being upgraded together. to cross-platform so i think it's becoming more and more normalized so cross-platform yeah. and, re- and cross-play i should say real quick uh Chu, I, I want to apologize i pushed uh <laughs> the game real hard i hit the red during that laugh when you talked about uh that you're not going to change. So I apologize for you having to edit that. All the editing? Ass. No, that's yeah. okay. As long as you weren't uh, mashing the fucking mouse like we've had a couple of us do a few times recently. That's been a bit... Every time there's something. There was one week where Hebrew and I... I don't know whether we both had like laryngitis at the same time or something, but both of us were like... Ugh! Like every two seconds in the edit. <laughs> that the live guys must have been like, can you not? Whereas in the edit, no one ever really heard that. So... I did yeah, figure no, out what the clicks are, by the way. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're I know It's on my mouse. It's me. I pop my fingers all the time. I think it might be that. Because no, I know it's definitely it's a mouse. I'll share you the raw audio later on. Okay. It's definitely a mouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, here, I'm about, I'm about to do it now. It actually sounded like tell, you were MSFing on. Tell me if this, is a, if this is it, right? I'm about to pop them. That's not it. That's gross. That's not it? Okay. Nah, no, there's... then maybe not. Yeah. But yeah, go ahead. No, but I congratulate you on your future arthritis. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, it's time for the big thank yous, boys. Uh, for the last time in uh, 2020, whether you've been supporting us for months from the start or whether you literally signed up on Christmas Day, um, thank you to every single one of you. Whether you're a dollar supporter or whether you're a motherfucking space whale, um, <laughs> we appreciate all of you and everything you've done for us. Um, so... Thank you for your support and keep that feedback coming in 2021. We definitely want to make this a nerd show for nerds, right? Don't get me wrong. We're still going to do what we want to do for the most part, but we're always happy to evolve the show and take feedback when we get it right. Um, Hell, I've always thought it'd be funny to have like a section of the show with like shit we got wrong. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we're all like, yeah. you know, I'm pretty sure in like 1990 that, uh, you know, Lawrence Fishburne was in Snakes on a Plane. You're like, whoa, whoa, no, no, it wasn't, you know? <laughs> um, that's sort of like we pretty as well. So look, if we got it right, if we got it wrong, uh, stuff you'd like us to talk about more, keep it coming on the Discord, discord.me forward slash A&R. But to our patrons, to our supporter tier guys first, I'm going to go slower than normal because I want to make sure you guys hear the fact that we appreciate you. To Ox5, to Batbutt, Connor L, Captain Jeepus, Goat Avenger, LFC Avenger, that is, uh, Sil J003, Lunchbox, and Alan K. Thank you to all of you. To the fanboys, the AR fanboys. So to Mad Dog, Dadge Wreck, Commander Hansen, Unhinged, Flexipotamus, Matt Bloody, Simon L, Incorrect User, Rockstar, Corey F, Dan1387. Snorlax Hunter, TT Marco, JJ Orbitz, Curtis the Greek, Swain Hammer, Jamie X23, Bearded Viking, Metalhead, Run and Gun 83, Dracul, Lili, Zateotech, Admirero, Frozen, Chief, Fat Honey Badger, Pike, and our brand new but definitely uh, awesome, awesomely named uh, Rum Ham. Again, <laughs> I need to know the story of this Rum Ham. I've just added you on Discord now. Um, it's always did you sunny. create this name earlier or was it what what were the things sitting in front of me on christmas day because oh, I, either I, way i'm guaranteeing it came from it's always sunny in philadelphia rum ham oh rum ham i don't think i've seen that episode uh it's an ongoing joke uh rum ham it's um 
Danny DeVito's like uh, joke thing where he bakes rum ham. It and sounds it. like a Charlie thing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, it's uh, he eats it too, but yeah, Danny DeVito makes it and he, he it's an ongoing joke. So yeah. Oh, gotcha. okay. All right, I'll have to look into this. All right. Uh, so to the A and R dedicated to Nightside, Conway Supreme, Abyssarum, Captain Hammer, DJB, Morphine Dream, Cheetah, Hobbs, Tuggernuts, Andrew G, Domino, Real East, Paul Puck, Beer God. Carino, Mookie, Grim, Justin, Gimme Scotch, and Blaff06. Thank you to all of you. And special thanks to Beer God. Uh, Beer God reaches out quite a few times and uh, has gone above and beyond for me as well during when I was Twitch streaming, uh, to which I'm still planning out what to do next year. So thank you to you, mate. Uh, to the Multiverse Masters, the guys that actually help us pay those overhead bills so that we can start to get some stuff for the show. To Agent Zero, Honeycombs, uh, the grumpy gamer dad himself, Da Hooch. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> not a problem <laughs> to silver wolf to bronzy jedi matroza slim jay shriver neil wybird wiley jackie 246 uh lord keen the quixotic one himself special thanks to you my friend um i was glad to see that all that stuff got to, he, he was so excited about the show he accidentally slept a second time about a month or so ago um <laughs> which we, we worked out for him thank god <laughs> Uh, to Moon, to Judas95, Folksy Smolpsy, Spark Zulu, Dracus, Kane, Creative Name, and of course, McFly1184, our resident Genshin master. And we wouldn't be finishing off this list without talking about the motherfucking space whale himself, uh, <laughs> to Della, Hulked Out Heroes, whatever name you want to be called these days, mate. Again, a massive thank you. A Merry Christmas, a little bit late to all of you, and uh, absolutely best wishes for the new year, folks. Um, thank you for everything. And if we can do more for you guys as patrons next year, uh, let us know. There's a lot of stuff that, if time permits, we want to put on to that Patreon page uh, beyond the tiers that you've got there at the moment. Um, time has been our enemy, but here's hoping that 2021 uh, gives us our weekends back. Yeah, for real. Yeah. All right, boys. Happy New Year to you, I guess, by the time this comes out, Hebrew Hammer. Yeah, thank you. See you guys. And uh, best wishes for next year as well to Da Hooch. Thanks, buddy. Not a problem. See you in the new year. Thank Always like getting to say this. See you motherfuckers next year. Exactly.